couple seconds for some more people to come on. We literally have 163 slides. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Um, I was really struggling with what... Oh, my God. I forgot to log in so I can chat with you all. Hi. Yeah, log in. Uh, let me do that while I wait for people to join. No, not join Twitch today. Log in. Parking lot. <laughs> oh, I need to put my phone on to not disturb. Oh my god, so much is happening right now. I get so overstimulated from group chats. Like, I love being in group chats because I love being a part of something. But I find, like, when people start talking and I'm in the middle of something, I, like, literally will have a panic attack. Okay. Now I'm into the chat. I meant to, oh my god, what did I just do? Sorry, everything just disappeared. I meant to do that earlier and I just completely, completely forgot about it. Let me put my phone on Do Not Disturb and let's get this freaking party started. Um, okay, so today we are talking about the Jane Fonda. This is going to be a mix of all the things we love. We're going to be talking about terrible men. We're going to be talking about the Vietnam War. We're going to be talking about body issues. We're going to be talking about feminism. We're going to be talking about civil rights. Jane Fonda has truly done it all. Like I said, we have so much to discuss. We have 163 slides tonight, so we are going to get straight into it. Actually, I lied to you. I have one, two other things to say. So number one, please donate to Dr. Sofian. I um, talked to him the other day, and donations are just like super, super slow. Everything is super terrible, um, which unfortunately is not news. That's been the vibe for a little while now. Um, the PayPal is on my link tree. That should be working now. So if you cannot... And if someone could put the PayPal in the chat, that would be awesome. Um, if you cannot use GoFundMe because your bank blocks it or whatever, PayPal should work. Um, oh my goodness, I just realized I forgot to change our backdrop, which was going to be about my other thing. Give me one second. There we go. That's our backdrop for this week. Because next week we are talking about Glee. Because I was like, how does one stream on election night? How does one do that? Because I don't think we're going to get the results that night. I really just don't. I don't know why I believe that, but I do. And I was like, even the thought of doing a live watch makes me want to throw up. So I was like, you know what would make me not want to throw up? Literally watching the worst possible moments from Glee. My cousin is like so into Glee. She thinks it's like the most like insanely written show ever and she's making the stream so i'm really excited for that one have fun gleeks i'll be closing the polls thank you for your service like genuinely thank you for your service it's the perfect amount of brain rot that's how i felt i was like it's just the perfect level of unserious because if we got too unserious it's like the world's falling apart let's focus glee was just perfect absolutely perfect so anyway Let's talk about the Jane Fonda. If you don't know who we're talking about, this is Jane Fonda. She's literally gorgeous. That's a relatively recent picture of her. So Jane Seymour Fonda was born December 21st, 1937, born literally in the Depression. She's lived through so much. Imagine being a child in World War II. Oh, my God. Um, she's an American actress and activist. Recognized as a film icon, her work spans several genres in over six decades of film and television. So section one, we have family lore. We have sections now. You mad about it? Get over it. I like it. <laughs> so she was born via C-section in 1937. I didn't even know they could do that in 1937. Like, am I stupid for thinking? Like, am I stupid for being surprised by that? I was like, whoa. C-section, 1937. That sounds like a horror movie. Like, I don't know. I was very taken aback by that. I'm not saying it was impossible. I, th I just, I was taking, I felt like that was noteworthy. I feel like you did, you like, you don't hear about C-section. I love the inclusion of her being born versus C-section. I think it was important to know because it was literally 1937. I feel like those weren't nearly as common then. Am I wrong for that? Like, um, at Doctor's Hospital, that literally sounds fake as fuck. 
what hospital do you work at? Uh, doctor's hospital. I work at the doctor's hospital. Her parents were Canadian-born socialite Francis Ford Seymour and American actor Henry Fonda. Nepo baby! Nepo baby! No, I feel like that's fair. I'm shocked too, right? So this is a picture of her when she was young. We do have a lot of pictures and a lot of videos tonight. I'm very excited about that. Such a little cutie. Here's some more pictures of her during this time. I think they go back to like 700 BC. Well, then the women died. I think that was murder, actually. There has been multiple television shows I have watched. I don't want to spoil anything for you all, but I don't really think either of these are things that are going to be, like, super popular with y'all. So I'm going to not say any names of characters, but in the Game of Thrones spinoff House of Dragons and then in the show Vikings, there's multiple occasions where they're looking at a bitch and, like, the men are like, we could give her a C-section, but it would kill her. And they don't even fucking ask her. And she's literally just laying there like, what the fuck? Like, I think if you want to die, like, if you're like, yeah, kill me, that's your right, your body, your choice. Like, yeah, if you want to die for that, for sure. But, like, to die in a non-consexual C-section, I would rather just get shot. And that's in the show, they're like, in the shows when this happens, they're like, oh, well, they're both going to die if we don't do this. Literally shoot me then. Okay. Shoot me and then do it. They didn't have guns in those shows. But, like, I don't take me out. That You know what I mean? Like, kill me before. Or, like, give me drugs or something. I don't know. But I just, I hated both of those times that that happened in television shows. We're so off topic. But, um, very good question. Dumb question. It's not a dumb question. What makes someone a socialite? Is it just rich for unemployed? Exactly. Exactly. It's rich and unemployed. Generally, socialite means like you have family money and you are like in the town doing happenings and charity events and the like. Um, but you yourself are probably not up to too much if you have the term of socialite. So Henry Fonda was born in 1905. He died in 1982. R.I.P. Um, is one of most Hollywood's most iconic actors, known for his portrayals of the morally upright everyday men. Born in Nebraska, he initially studied journalism but found his way into acting, launching a career on the stage in the 1920s. His Broadway success led to a contract with Hollywood, where he made his film debut in Farmer Takes a Wife in 1935. He became the leading man of the 1930s and 40s, admired for his naturalistic acting style and calm demeanors. Wouldn't it be dope to be a man like his big break was 1935. He had a baby two years later, and that's still known as his, like, most important career time. <sighs> um, naturalistic style and calm demeanor. Some of his more acclaimed performances were The Grapes of Wrath, the portrayal of Tom Joad, and an earned him an um, Academy Award nomination. One of my contacts is fucked up, so I'm just gonna be really close to you tonight. Sorry about that. How's everyone feeling? Um, 12 Angry Men. Okay, so, like, I don't know shit about movies, and even I know these movies. I don't know Farmer Takes a Wife, but I know Grapes of Wrath, and I know 12 Angry Men, because I had to watch them at school. Um, in his personal life, Fonda was known for his reserved nature, quite different from the passionate actors he often portrayed. He was married five times and had three children, including Jane Fonda and Peter Fonda, both of whom became prominent actors. So childhood's looking a little bit chaotic. Um, your dad getting married five times is, like, kind of a lot. I think we should unpack that. Five times is a lot. I really try to not be judgmental, but five? Maybe after three, we, we think maybe marriage is not for us. Maybe. And that's okay. That's literally fine. And five marriages back when, like, they didn't have no-fault divorce in a lot of states? I guess he was famous, so he got to do whatever he wanted. I was so confused watching 12 Angry Men in seventh grade. Three strikes, you're out. I think that's... That's reasonable. I think we can all agree on that. I think capping at three might be the way to go. This is what I'm saying. One of my students the other day was like, would you ever want to be the president? And I was like, no, but I would want to be a dictator. And they looked really scared by that. But this is why, because I want to pass a law that says you can only be married three times. And look at the men in Congress. They're not going to pass that. Look at them. Um, could you do a history of birth stream? 
I can't handle that. I'm going to be honest with you. I think that that piece of media should exist and I don't think I should be the one to create it, mainly because what I already know is so terrifying and I really don't want to learn more. So <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. Um, I, I'm trying to remember if I've done this. I would do like history of contraceptive. That I could get into. History of birth? Don't think I have that in me. <laughs> I do not. I simply do not have that in me. I will consider history of contraceptives, though. Speaking of, if you would like to continue having access to contraceptives, um, let's get out there and vote, everybody. <laughs> let's get out there and vote. Things are not looking good for us at the current moment in time. I think that things could be looking a lot better finding it a little surprising, shocking, jarring that a felon is, uh, running at all. And the fact that he, it's like gonna, it's like, we don't know who's gonna win. And like, one of them's a felon. Um, that's, that's like not really adding up for me and my value system. So I'm, I am kind of wondering about that. And I like to think that my followers and I have similar value systems. So if any, anybody could just like go to your local polling place I would recommend. Um, I've done the birth thing twice and can confirm it's terrifying. My condolences. I, Jesus Christ. It literally just seems like, how have we not figured out something better? Like, <laughs> because every option seems fucking horrible, you know? 1937 C-section, natural, like everything seems really bad. I, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. I really don't know. I, like how, I, you know, like, I, I don't know. I don't know how we haven't figured out how to make that less horrible. Yikes. Anyway, so childhood. Also, trigger warning, tonight has like a bunch of really fucking insane shit in it. Um, so in 1950, when Jane Fonda was 12, her mother died from suicide while going undergoing treatment at Craig House Psychiatric Hospital in New York. Um, later that year, her father married a 20, someone who was 23 years younger than him within a, a year of that. So that I'm sure is probably great for a 12 year old's development for your mother to die by suicide. Unclear on if they were married when this happened. I don't think that really makes a difference though. I think if your child's mother dies by suicide, like maybe your life goes on the back burner for a little bit. Like maybe, maybe we're not dating young women. Like just a thought, like maybe we put that on pause for like 12 months, I think, is very, very, very reasonable in terms of, like, not that long. Like, if you can't wait 12 months, like, all right, sir. And, like, you could have just dated her in secret. That was always an, like, we should know less about each other. You didn't have to marry her. That was, she was young as fuck. So, I'm sure she would have been fine with not getting married. Um... Because less than a year. Just Crazy 87, pipeline complete. So then she, Jane Fonda attended Greenwich Academy in Greenwich, Connecticut, the Emma Williard School in Troy, and Vassar College in Poughkeepsie, New York. So, yeah, there's a lot in that paragraph. Like, that is... Um, and that marriage ended in divorce, just BTW. The, the person 23 years younger than you that you married a year after... This poor woman committed suicide. That one wasn't a long-lasting marriage. Okay. Are we shocked? I'm not shocked. I'm not even surprised, I would say. This is the Emma Williard School. Her photo from there. This is Henry Fonda and Susan Blanchard, that woman. So, like, yeah, she's really pretty. I kind of expected that. Doesn't mean you need to marry her in less than a year. It really, really, really just doesn't. This is Jane Fonda talking about her mother's suicide. Me. Okay, so this girl was and my 19. Is in the background looking sort of stricken, and it just makes me so sad. When I wrote my memoir, I dedicated it to my mother. Who killed herself. Also, the reason I picked her is because I listened to Celebrity Memoir Book Club's episode about her memoir. I want to read her memoir, but I've gotten a lot of inspo from them. Someone commented and they were like, you copy Celebrity Memoir Book Club? I might have already said this. 
But I really don't think it's copying because they're reading a book and then I'm doing it about the person's life and I use some things from the book, but I use other things as well. I think it's just like, these people are just famous. I just think she is such My fail. a smart woman. So she became interested in the arts in 1954 while appearing um, with her father in a charity performance of The Country Girl at the Omaha Community Playhouse. After dropping out of Vassar, she went for to Paris for six months to study art. Upon returning, returning to the U.S. in 1958, she met Lee Strausberg. The meeting changed the course of her life. Fonda said, I went to the actor's studio and Lee Strausberg told me I had talent. Real talent. It was the first time anyone except for my father um, who had to say so told me I was good at anything it was a turning point in my life I went to bed thinking about acting I woke up thinking about acting it was like the roof came off of my life in her youth she was also an accomplished dancer by the age of 15 she had taken up a role um teaching dance this is a later photo of her but vibe I love my assistant um Body image, again, trigger warning. She suffered from poor self-image and lacked confidence in her um, appearance, an issue that was exacerbated by her father, Henry Fonda. I was raised in the 1950s. I was taught by my father that how I looked was all that mattered, frankly. He was a good man and I was mad for him, but he sent me messages to me that fathers should not send. Unless you look perfect, you are not going to be loved. That's a lot. That's a lot from dad. She does look perfect, so I don't even think he needed to say it, you know? I think, like, she already looks perfect, so maybe we just keep that one in. Because li literally, look at... You have to look perfect or else you will not be loved. I wonder if he literally said that, or if he said that in a manner of ways. And I'm not trying to say that to, like, take the blame off. If anything, I think it was probably worse. And that was her just, like, summarizing it to be like, this is what, what the general vibe was. Or if he literally said that. Either way, bad. Um, I feel like maybe dad's new wife was jealous of her beauty. One thing I love about us as a community is we will literally come up with anything. And yeah, I'll agree with you. Yeah, that's our new narrative. Let's go with it. I like how we've had nothing to hint at that, but I fully agree with you. Yep. I love misinformation. <laughs> I truly mean that with love. I am glad you said that. So let's get into her early career, 1959 to 1969. Also, I easily could have done a month-long series about her. I just want to say that. There's other stories from her childhood and things like that. But I think those two big things, like relationship with dad and mother suicide and the remarriage, kind of like gives us a vibe check that things were not good. I think we can all kind of summarize from that. Miss Redacted, no. Misinformation. She is literally the most beautiful person I have ever seen in my life. She was the first woman to climb the Eiffel Tower. Like, I'm gonna believe that too. I don't even know if you're right, but I believe you. Um, AJ is the re six. Thank you for subscribing. Or is that AJ or EJ? I told you my contacts are fucked up. But anyway, look at how fucking beautiful she is. Like, if I ever go to a plastic surgeon, I'm bringing this slide. I'm gonna be like, I would like one of those, please. And, like, this is literally pre-plastic surgery. Like, not a filler in sight. Not a filler in sight. So, 1955, um, she writes in her autobiography, that came out later, she, we're talking about the year 1955, that she lost her virginity at age 18 to actor James Franciscus. He was 21 at the time. I think that's literally fine. I know, like, a lot of cancel people on the internet are like, she was a kid. I personally think 18 and 21 is fine. You can cancel me if you want, but I think that's A-OK -okay in my book, especially in the 1950s. A lot of people were up to way weirder stuff then. Um, <clears throat> he's an American actor known for his roles in films and TV series. Uh, Mr. Novak, Naked City, The Investigators, Longstreet, Doc Elliott, and Hunter. Um, so this is some of her work from this time. Tall story, low-key crazy plot. She plays a girl at college who really wants a husband. Women deserved so much better during this time, but she's pretty successful from the jump. She's already booking movies, but that's not that shocking. Her dad was super famous. She's literally fucking gorgeous, and multiple people said she was very talented. So if you're surprised, I'm personally not. This is Jane Fonda arriving in Dallas, April 1960. Okay, she literally looks like Jackie Kennedy. Look at her. Okay, she's literally an icon, I can't. Um, 
What's my line? Jane Fonda, Martin Gable, and Bolly Purgeon. Is this like a the old show? I get it, Jane. He's cute. Exactly. Like he's hot. She's hot. They're both actors. She's eighteen. He's twenty-one. That is a rare time that like a losing virginity as a famous person story goes really well. Seems like the vibe was pretty good for her at this moment. Five. Brought to you by Kellogg's. They've the been around a while. The best to you it's like morning. a game show. The widest choice of cereals. Evening, ladies and gentlemen, and Miss Polly Bergen. It's very nice of you to be with us tonight with Miss Arlene entrapped in the Florida sunshine. You coming on short notice, we thank you, and we will not be at all kind to you for coming. Don't be tough. Be tough on the whole panel, as a matter of fact. We'll also TV have a famous so mystery boring. guest they didn't even have real in the housewives. show, and we'll meet our first challenger after this. And now let's meet our first challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? Where is she? Mm, I'm gonna skip this, because I don't want to watch the whole episode, and I don't know where she is, but y'all get the vibe. She's doing game shows, she's on TV, she's doing her thing. So late 1950s, early into the 60s, she dated automobile racing manager Giovanni Vol Volpe, producer San Antonio San Zdivuchuna. I sound like a racist person from the 1950s that, like, hates Italian. <laughs> Um, Sandy Whitelaw, as well as actors Warren Beatty, Peter Mann, Christian Marcod, and William Wellman Jr. Period. <laughs> Period. As she should. And that kind of made her seem like a whore, but this is saying like a 10-year period. So I think that that's literally fine. I love this. I love that she's like not married with nine kids already. She lost her virginity at an appropriate age to an appropriate age. Like, this woman can pull. This woman can pull. She's dating multiple people, dumping them, moving on, dating other hot guys, dating famous people. Like, pick your fighter. Mine's Warren. Um, yeah, I think most of us are going with Warren, I'm going to be honest. Um, she often bearded for closeted homosexuals. This is getting better and better. I love her. Um, including dancer Timmy Averett, theater director Andreas Bustini, and actor Earl Holloman. I am obsessed with her. It's Ventina Ally. <laughs> like, she is literally living the dream. She's like, I'm dating hot guys. I'm bearding for hot guys. I'm famous. I'm on planes. I'm on TV. I'm making money. Period. And look at her. Literally look at her. Are you joking me? The picture on the right with the black and white with the top, her face card, the jawline. Are you kidding me? Are you actually like I want to go lay in traffic. Look at her. Look at her. Absolutely incredible. So 1962, she was in the movie Period of Adjustment. She played Isabel, a newlywed who faces marital tensions on her honeymoon. And then Walk on the Wild Side, she portrays Kitty Twist, a young troubled prostitute working in a New Orleans brothel. Array of characters. She can do it all. She's not just typecast where she's playing herself. Like, you know, a lot of Nepo babies only play themselves. I'm absolutely loving this. Look at her in Period of Adjustment. I'm sorry. Like, I'm not over it. Not over it. Never gonna get over it. Never will be over it. Look at her. Face. Body. She has it all. Um, another great years for her in the 60s. Uh, Sunday in New York, 1963. The Chapman Report, also 1963. In Joy House, 1964. In Circle of Love, 1964 as well. So she's a literally booking. She is a booked and busy she's making money and she's finding time to be a beard and she's fighting time finding time to date how does she nail so many different aesthetics so effortlessly like she is the it girl she is the moment she is what we're about and she is like literally the icon and we're so lucky to be alive with her oh my god antonio's here antonio grand i miss you how are you we're just live laughing and learning about jane fonda He's on TikTok. Antonio, on Twitch, we're really having the time of our lives. And my emojis on TikTok aren't working. 
Um, probably because I need to update my computer. But anyway, 1965, 1966, more incredible movies. She's literally fucking crushing it. Cat Ballou, she plays a mild-mannered school teacher who turns into an outlaw seeking revenge for her father's murder. I need to watch that immediately. It's giving Kissing Kate Barlow, but, like, slightly different. Uh, the Chase game is over any Wednesday. Look at her. And I love that she was serving under Boob in 1966. Who the fuck else was serving under Boob in 1966? Can anyone tell me? Was anyone else serving under Boob in 1966? She surely is serving. I'm so proud of her, and I literally don't even know her. This is her in Cat Baloo. Looking fucking phenomenal. Lashes popping, lips bussin'. Ugh! She looks so good. I'm so obsessed with her. Dun, dun, dun! She gets married. She looks like a bad bitch, though. Look at that dress. Short white wedding dress. That's iconic. That really is. So Fonda and her first husband, French film director Roger Vadman, became an item December 1963 and then got married August 14th, 1965 at the Dunes Hotel in Las Vegas. At least they knew each other for two years. Like, that was pretty uncommon for the 60s. I felt like people got married in, like, five minutes in the 60s. She is still serving work. That's what makes me a little more comfortable with this, because a lot of men would be like, you're not going to work anymore. It's the 1960s. But Jane Fonda said, I am that bitch, and I will always be that bitch. And I will always be on camera. And here she is on camera. Barefoot in the park, Barbella, they shoot horses, don't they? A desperate woman competing in a grueling dance marathon during the Great Depression. If it's the Great Depression and your biggest problem is your dance competition, I think you're doing pretty okay. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, that's no reflection on Jane Fonda. That is purely a reflection on the writing of that movie. Why do I have so many text messages? Anyway, so Barbella was directed by her first husband. Wait, what was Barbella about? She plays the role of a space traveling heroine sent to stop a villain threatening the galaxy. Yeah, that sounds like it was directed like by a man. Um, she has boot. She is in nest serving face. She serves face everywhere she goes. There's barefoot in the park. Very suggestive pose. Loving that absolutely great then the couple had a daughter in 1968 how old was she then so at that point she would be 31 love it love it great age to have a child am i gonna be 31 soon no we're good great age to have a child 31 31 perfect no no again no no seems like for the fucked up child she had she's making pretty good personal choices at this point um so anyway, they had their daughter, Vanessa Vidim, um, born in Boulogne, Bilan Court. Where the hell is that? Where the hell is that? But then separation reports surfaced two years later in March 1970. Um, and she, her spokesperson said that they were totally untrue. But by mid-1972, she conceded, we're separated, not legally. We're just separated. We're friends. So I wonder what wrong there. beautiful family seems like a tough situation she also was known as like an american sex symbol this picture of her on an italian beach became a very common pinup poster during this time i don't know if this is before or after she got married and had her daughter probably around the time she got married if i had to guess so this is a career interview she did in 1967 so was this before she had her daughter yeah this was before she had her daughter several months ago i had the pleasure of uh Visiting and filming oh, it's a commune Jane in Fonda France. and her husband, Roger Vadim, at their beautiful farm outside of Paris. Oh, yep. At that time, I extended an invitation to them to visit us here on the I show. I love that people used to, to smoke that they on are TV. Here with us today. Jane is one of our finest actresses, equally adept at both comedy and drama. Vadim, as he is called in France, is one of the giants of European filmmaking and has received critical acclaim for his triple threat activities, producer, director, and writer. A pleasure to have this charming couple with us. Here are Jane Fonda and Roger Vadim. <laughs> I don't know where to look. <laughs> May I talk to her for one minute, Roger? Yes, yes. Hi, Jane. It's nice to see you again. It's good to see you again. Is, is there a name for all of it? 
<laughs> Put black stockings okay. and a mini skirt. This is an uh, outfit to catch planes in. Ah, that's right. Yes. You're tearing right out of here tonight and going home. Yes, back to that farm that you know. Happily so, though, aren't you? Yeah. Good, good. Had Very a good trip? Happy. Late night TV is always You enjoyed it, Roger? Uh, what? Uh, the trip to America. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Ah. It's not the first one. It's not the last one either. And uh, I enjoyed my time. The permission between time men about a full-grown Yeah, but they've been woman. running you all over town. Uh, for interviews, and uh, that's a lot of work, isn't it? Yes, but you know, I, I managed to, to have my wife work more than I did those last days, and it's all right. Don't piss me off. Oh, that's better. Yeah. He's very cool. I don't know how he does it. I'm the one that gets him nervous, and he's just sort of floats through it all. Very relaxed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to watch this. He's Several like months kind ago. Of pissing me off. So, um, I wish that this was in here. I want to read a little bit. It says the truth about her marriage. So as Fonda's star rose, she became associated with the sex kitten role she chose to take on, like in Barbella. Um, so she said, what Vadim gave me was huge, huge. He reawakened me sexually. There's no doubt a part of my attraction to him in his life was because it was so different from the repressed style in which I had been raised. But apparently they had an open marriage arrangement, um, and that is why they got divorced, because she got tired of it. That's why I felt like there was a drama in there so open marriage didn't really work out like that so in the 1960s she really started to move into civil rights activism and some of her activism stuff we kind of grouped it by category so the timelines will kind of go back and forth a little bit i figured it made more sense to go by category and just know she's doing a lot of stuff at one time it's impressive so late 1960s as her acting career gained he was reminding her of her dad, I bet. Oh, T. T. Oh, Freud is rolling. Anyway, as Jane Fonda's acting career gained momentum, she began using her public platform to advocate for social causes. Early on, she aligned herself with the Black Panther Party, an organization established in 1966 aimed to protect Black Americans from police brutality and address the systematic social and economic inequalities faced by the Black community. I think the Black Panther Party is absolutely fascinating. It's one of my favorite things to teach in U.S. history. I have a stream about it. Um, I don't remember what it was. It was a while ago because that was one of the first ones that I did. But the Black Panther Party is an incredibly interesting organization. There's a lot of misconceptions about it. Um, and I think that everyone should just be learning about it because it's it says a lot about our government. I'll leave it at that. The government ripped them apart and killed a lot of people. Anyway. I could talk about the Black Panther Party for hours. They're fascinating to me. I'm very inspirational. So Fonda recognized the Panthers as a critical force for change, and she supported them both financially and publicly. Um, while pregnant, she actively participated in civil rights protests, joining Black Panther members in demonstrations and marches to advocate for African-American rights and civil protections. She not only contributed financially, but she also worked to secure donations from others to support the group. Her visible and vocal support of the Black Panthers drew a attention to their cause as she used her influence to raise awareness about their objectives and struggles. I feel like the Hollywood icons are not doing it like Jane Fonda was doing it. Jane Fonda said, I just became famous. Let's talk about the Black Panther Party. Let's talk about it. And I feel like now no one wants to talk about anything because their manager is like, shut the fuck up. But Jane Fonda was like, well, we're going to talk about the Black Panther Party. What do you mean? Because we're going to talk about the Black Panther Party. So, Early 1970s, continued support for Huey Newton and the Black Panther Party. She remained closely aligned with them through the 1970s, um, particularly the leader Huey Newton. She describes the Panthers as our revolutionary vanguard, highlighting her deep commitment to the movement. In a passionate statement about her decision to about her dedication to their cause, Fonda said, revolution is an act of love. We are children of the revolution, born to be rebels. It runs in our blood. She expressed that the Panthers embodied the spirit of revolution, and she sure urged others to support them through love, money, propaganda, and risk. Does she regret it? To Miss Fonda, mm, uh, do you think your very public political views in the 60s, which, by the way, I completely supported then and now, uh, had a negative impact on your career and if so do you have any regrets looking back okay it was 60s 70s 80s 90s <laughs> 2010 all the way up to 2000 and what year is it 17 what year is it 17 i have my political views 
that change as you do when you get older. And I live 20 years in Georgia, so I have more empathy and compassion and patience. And do I? No, I, no. I, I, you know, I'm the daughter of Henry Fonda, who played Tom Joad in Grapes of Wrath and 12 Angry Men. And, you know, you have a parent like that, and you grow up wanting to stick up for the underdogs, and you hate bullies. And, you know, artists of all kinds sure, you, yes, you're an actor and can tend to speak truth to power. You know, and I'm and I'm grateful for my dad's influence. Thank you for the question. Do you, do you, I, I, I wonder about that because it's a very kind of charged political environment now. And Is it? Both, yeah, I, I've, noticed, <laughs> I've noticed. I've noticed occasionally that people seem to be getting angry um, at the drop of a hat. I wonder, do you ever temper? You either one of you? Do you ever think I, I can't? hear it anymore or are you still as um well they're both like appalled at this about question all the, the cause both of you really i i would ask that oh yeah i think so i th i think uh this is the first really time i'm learning about her and i'm in love i'm glad administration this the whole turn that everything's taking yeah and it's it's very wonderful to see how many people who have never considered themselves activists are becoming active and how many, I mean, thousands of women are wanting to run for office now that would never have considered that before. I think yeah. that's, that's really great. So she's always been politically involved. She's always been like, from what it seems like on the right side of history, I mean, she, she's human, I'm sure she's made mistakes, I'm sure some of them will be in here, but seems like she was pretty on the right side of history from the jump. So speaking of mistakes, except this was the government's mistake, not hers. She was arrested at Cleveland Hopkins International Airport on suspicion of drug trafficking. Support the Black Panther Party. Boom, you're a drug trafficker. The U.S. government. Okay? They do whatever they want. Whatever. Whatever they want. They do whatever. They do whatever they want. Why would she be drug trafficking? She's a Nepo baby and famous. Why would... Where would the motivation be? Um, her luggage was searched when she re-entered the United States after participating in an anti-war college speaking tour in Canada. They said, you were, you were out there being against the war. It's selling drugs. This sounds like you're selling drugs if you're against the war. Um, she had several small baggies containing pills. She protested that the pills were harmless vitamins. She was booked by police and then released on bond. Fonda alleged that the arresting officer told her he was acting on direct orders from the Nixon White House. And as she wrote in 2009, I told them that I told them what the vitamins were and they said they were getting orders from the White House. I think they hoped this scandal would cause the college speeches to be canceled and ruin my respectability. After lab test confirmed that the pills were vitamins, the charges were dropped and it got little media attention. So they thought they could be Jane Fonda and they were wrong they were absolutely wrong this is her mugshot serving face in the mugshot like of course she is serving absolute face in the mugshot her mugshot which rate where she raised a fist and sign of solidarity has become a widely published image of the actress hell yeah <laughs> hell yeah I love those of you that are just learning about her. So, well, let's watch some of her, like, or let's get into some of her other activism because no. I don't want to spoil it with this interview. Um, but this is, okay, we don't like to use that word anymore, but keep in mind this was from the 1970s. This is her on the Dick Cavett show. Armor, Golden Star Ham, when buying a canned ham, remember the honest ham on Rigoho on. <laughs> And a lovely thing you are, too. Oh, thank you, Dick. Do, do you remember me? Yes, I do. Of course I remember you. Do you really? Yeah. Remember the honest man. The... As opposed to the lying Where, where do you remember me from? The last time I was on the show. You were on the show once before. Yes, I was. Yes, no, I know that very this well. But do you remember the first time we ever met? Time, so this is a terrible it. thing to say. No. What's the first time you ever remember meeting me? On your show. Really? Yes. Oh. And you said buzz off, Mac. Really? They really are convinced. Do, do they act different toward you now? Does anyone treat you more seriously? Or... Uh, you forgot yeah, me, right? I, 
Yes, I guess they do. People treat me yeah. more seriously because of that, because of because of seems like a real things dick. that I'm talking about, because of things that I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, it's a very good feeling, as a matter of fact. How concerned are you about the fact that you're you may get an Oscar? It would be very nice. Yeah. Do you dream it's about so it? Awkward. Does it mean a lot? Does no, I've got other, lots of other more important things to dream about. How such do they as... get guys with such a little charisma? Oh, wow. Like, why does he have a TV well, show and I don't? The kind of things that I'm discovering, the kind of things that I've been listening to and hearing, and and. Uh... Can you speak up just a bit for the balcony? Yeah, you can't hear me up there. I've been having lots of dreams about the kind of things that I've been seeing and hearing and finding out this about, is big. and Where some of it's very disturbing energy. and. Uh, uh, I guess those are more important things to dream about than Oscars. It would be very nice if I got an Oscar, though. Mm -hmm. But uh, she's carrying the whole thing. Who knows? You were in the papers not too long ago with something that had happened involving an uh, army base and and some Indians. Or am I confusing two items at once? Well, they're, they're, the media confused a lot of things. I, well, it was I very was, confusing. I saw a short it, item about uh, it, and I never saw anything else about it. It was one of the things that, that proved to me... Well, of course, I already knew it, that you never can believe what you read in the newspaper. I was... Mm. I, I discovered that I had led troops of Indians onto several army bases and was in stockades with them. And what actually happened was I went to the state of Washington uh, to visit a GI coffee house and to uh, talk to some Indians up there about the fact that they've, their fishing rights have been taken away and they're dying. Uh, they're starving to death because of it. Uh, Real. While I was up there, I found out that the Indians were planning to occupy an army base in protest against the fact that... Uh, their demands for the right to the land, all non-used federal land, Wendy goes Williams to the Indians by treaty. And uh, when they have tried to ask the officials to let them use the land to build a cultural center and a university, nobody's been listening to them. So This th reminds me of when we did the Alcatraz Island, where they referred back to that same treaty she's talking about, about, like, unused federal land. They thought, well, people will listen to us maybe if we, if we occupy the base. And I thought, well, if I'm there... Perhaps by virtue of my presence, there will be less brutality. So I went on the base um, with a couple of Indians and a friend of mine, Mark Lane, and, uh, and didn't see any Indians any place except the two that were with me. I didn't, I didn't know what had happened. I thought maybe there'd been a mix-up. Uh, but the, the, the army knew what I was there for, and they asked me to leave, telling me that the base was closed to civilians, which wasn't true because there were civilians coming off and on the base all the time. And, uh, Did they know who you were? When they... Yeah, sure, they knew. So literally in the 1970s, well, working with natives, doing like a occupation, this is her discussing Vietnam War protests. I think that what's happening is that in order to make it look like we have won a war which we did not win, to keep American people hating Vietnamese, what which we have no reason to hate, to uh, be sure that Congress will not vote appropriations to Vietnam, um, a, a very small handful, less than 20 out of over 500 P POWs, um, are many of whom, by the way, made very strong anti-war statements, um, signed very strong statements, are now saying that they did so under duress and because they were tortured. And um, I think that time will tell, and uh, over the years, just the way it, it happened around the uh, Tonkin Gulf incident, we will see that... Um, that it is not true. Are we trying to exterminate an entire people? What, are, what have we become as a nation if we are trying to exterminate, and if we call the men heroes that were used by the Pentagon to try to exterminate an entire people? What business have we to try to exterminate a people? My father fought against people in the Second World War who were trying to exterminate a people. I don't think today we should repudiate everything that our fathers fought against or fought for in the Second World War, repudiate the democratic ideals that our country was founded on, the things that our forefathers fought for 200 years ago, by making these men into heroes. They are not men we should be proud of. She literally is so well-spoken and literally absolutely reading the shit out of everybody. This is Jane Fonda Wants a Revolution, 1970. No one else was doing it like her. Just no one else was doing it like her. As I can see it, the establishment is waging a war of counterinsurgency against the students and against the community, complete with pacification programs. The pacification programs are made up of the schools, the army, and the prisons. You want a revolution in America. Do you want it through violence? Do you think violence is the only mean of uh, no everyone point. seems to think that the word revolution means violence any kind of change i mean any healthy country like any healthy individual should be in perpetual revolution perpetual change that's evolution too 
Yes, but it's also, it's revolution. I mean, it's what this country was founded about. You know, our, our forefathers, Washington and Jefferson, were revolutionaries. Um, I think, personally, that the capitalist system is doomed to die. I don't think that it can last forever. In the 1970s! Uh, this may in a nonviolent way. One hopes that that would happen. Um, but, of course, the powers that be, the powerful people, are probably not going to go down without a fight. So there may very well be one day uh, some violence. There's <laughs> violence right now. You know, when people talk about violence, they should look at where the violence is coming from. It's coming from the administration. We have Speak an administration, every member of Speak whom is a war it. criminal. We have broken every international law, which we, the United States, along with the other countries, formed and ratified. She's just fucking very going clear for what it. A war crime is, and every one of the people in this administration and the last administration. And, uh, and the military heads who are responsible for our policy in Southeast Asia are war criminals. The Nazi officers and the Japanese were executed for less. Do you believe that there is... A building at my university was designed specifically to be confusing and hard to get around so that the Vietnam War pro protest would be harder to organize. So she truly gets it. She gets it. Her mind is awake. Do you feel sympathy with uh, the Palestinians or the Tupamaros or the Angolese or even the... Uh, Palestinians in 1970. Not where I thought this was going to turn, but the genocide in Palestine did not start recently. That has been going on for a very, 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 very long time. And when this was filmed, Israel was an extremely new country. It's still relatively new historically, but in 1970 it was very new. And yes, please donate to Dr. Shiofian. I wish um, Jane Fonda could. Maybe she's watching this later. The Quebec FLQ was, for instance. I, I am in sympathy. I do think that there is an international uh, movement. Uh, I, I feel sympathy for any peoples who are who are fighting for socialism, who are fighting for for. For liberation. Truly, for, to say this America. during the Cold it's War, she's incredible. Terrorism, no, I, I don't believe... Morally, I can understand why in America, for example, uh, people have, have the impulse to bomb a building which is making materials that kill people. You know, I can understand that. And since all normal means of recourse are blocked to us, you know, the frustration comes out in those acts. I personally think that they are elitist. I don't think that they build a mass base upon which one can work and organize. She um, fucking gets what it! Black Panthers and the Weathermen then? Yeah. Yes, I, I, they're not the same at all. The Weathermen are a group of, uh, of people who, who are underground, who have forced, forced, formed a fifth column. Um, I don't know what she's talking about. And as I said, I don't condone acts of terrorism. The Panthers do not bomb. They are armed I, and self -defense. I knew she was chill. Like, I didn't know she was like that right, level. Man, like, I, what the papers say. I knew she was high up there, but I didn't realize it was this high up there. As a matter of fact, if you ever see large crowds and the Panthers are present and there is any uh, uh, inkling that there will be violence, it's always the Panthers who, who calm everyone down. Just any tens black everywhere. Any in America who is not armed is a fool. Is a fool. I completely support the Black Panthers. <laughs> Like, she is the motherfucking moment. Her on feminism, capitalism, and values. I don't like them. Do you think them. that now you're still being a tomboy, acting as you're acting now? No, not at now. all. No? No. That's a kind of a very chauvinistic uh, question. People <laughs> seem to think that if you're a girl, you have to behave uh, in a way that is not militant or political, especially if you're an actress, you know, how dare an actress think or be political? Uh, that, <laughs> I that love is her! That's a wrong way of thinking. Um, what do you think of the Women Liberation Front? For I think it is one, one of the most revolutionary movements in America. I think it's extremely important, and I am fully in support. You have a two-year-old daughter, Vanessa. Yes. yes. In what kind of a society do you think that she'd be living in, let's say about 18 or 15 years from now? Well, I would hope that she would be living in a in a in an unpolluted Marxist social. Okay, maybe we should stop excusing old people being toxic because these ideas are not new. She was a, literally born in 1937. This country, uh, I don't think it's going to happen that fast. To tell you the truth, 
and I don't know what the state of this country is. I want to run that back a second, what she just said about her daughter. In a, in a, so in she a, says, in, a, in, a, in 15 years from now, well, I hope she would be living in a... In an unpolluted, Marxist, socialist country. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen that fast, to tell you the truth. And I don't know what the state of this She's country is going to She's probably so be disappointed in, in us. Years. Um, I would be. I'm very worried about it, obviously, which is why I'm doing what I'm doing. Jane Fonda Loki okay, becoming my favorite political a, philosopher. Was given by your parents to you that you wouldn't give to your daughter. Yes. Um, I was brought up with a lot of concern about money. Uh, if one didn't have enough, one was very nervous. It was sort of as with most Americans, something that is quite sacred. Possessions were very important in the kind of milieu in which I grew up in. Um, I, I have overcome that, and I will not lay that kind of myth on my child at all. She really is just an icon. Here's her speaking about Vietnam, Jane Fonda. Um, role in Clute in 1971, she played Brie Daniels, a high-priced call girl, earning her first Academy Award. This is her and David Sutherland in the movie. Um, her role as Brie Daniels in Clute won her an Oscar for Best, Best Actress in 1972. My dad is from 1939, and growing up, I never let him use the I'm old excuse for not learning and growing. If he's still learning and growing at 85, no one has an excuse. So true. So, in the early 1970s, she had affairs with political organizer Fred Gardner and Clute co-star Donald Sutherland. Isn't she single? Why is it an affair? I think she was just having a good time. Um, during this time, she said she struggled to get jobs. From comments ascribed to her in interviews, some inferred that she personally blamed her career struggles on her outspoken political views. She said, I can't say I was blacklisted, but I was gray listed. <laughs> However, in 2005, in her autobiography, she rejected the such simplification. The suggestion is that because of my actions against the war, my career had been destroyed. But the truth is that my career, far from being destroyed after the war, flourished with a vigor it had not previously enjoyed. She reduced acting because of her political activism, providing a focus on her new life. She returned to acting in a series of issue-driven films that reflected this new focus. Um, in 1972, she starred as a reporter alongside Yves Montand and Taut Bat Bien, um, directed by Jean-Luc Godard. This is too many French people, sorry. The two directors then made a letter to Jane in which the two spent nearly an hour discussing a news photograph of her. Um, at the time, while in Rome, she joined a feminist march on Mar feminist march on March eighth and gave a brief speech in support of the Italian women's rights. Marriage number two. Three days after obtaining a divorce from Vadim, she married Tom Hayden. But let's remember, her and Vadim had been separated for like three years at this point, so they probably just like hadn't done the paperwork. And then she wanted to marry this other guy and was like, "Can you sign your shit, please?" I bet that's what happened. It was a free-form ceremony at her home in Laurel Canyon. She had become involved with Hayden the previous summer and was three months pregnant when they got married. Their son, Troy, was born July 7th, 1973 in Los Angeles and was given his paternal grandmother's names as the names Fonda and Hayden carry too much baggage. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Fonda and Hayden named their son for Nguyen Van Tro, a Viet Cong member who attempted to assassinate the U.S. Secretary of Defense, Robert McNamara. Hayden chose O'Donovan as the middle name after the Irish revolutionary Jeremiah O'Donovan Rosa. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. She was like, who was that guy that tried to kill the U.S. Secretary of Defense? Let's name him after that guy. As she should as she should. This is her with that guy. It seems like they were very much activists together. Um, so he was not married during the time of the movie. Yeah, so why did they call it a fair? Like, they were both not in relationships. They were just having a good time. This is them with their son, I assume. Um, this is them with their son in Santa Monica in 1976. I love her hair in this. Oh, big hair in top right. Yeah, she just looks great. She used her kid as an activist statement. That's wild. I'm so obsessed with her. 
She started doing some more movies again in the later 70s. She produced Fun with Dick and Jane in 1977, um, which was ma her making her comeback, which, again, she said, like, she was kind of gray-listed. She was also focusing on political stuff. Like I said, she probably didn't need the money desperately. Um, role in Julie in 1977, and now she was committed to only making fil films that address significant societal concerns. So Fun with Dick and Jane realizes it's over for her and her husband's lavish life. I haven't seen this, but I've seen, like, the modern version of it a protest I hated to see them coming the protesters probably loved seeing them coming uh coming home 1978 she won her second academy award for portraying sally hyde a conflicted adulteress box office hits she achieved commercial success with films like the china syndrome whatever the hell that is and the electric horsemen in the late 70s in a struggle with Oprah Winfrey, she confessed that after years of struggling with her self-image, she said, it took me a long, long time to realize we're not meant to be perfect, we're meant to be whole. Whole. She said in adulthood, she developed bulimia, which took a toll on her quality of life and for an issue that also affected her mother, who we know died by suicide when she was 12. On the subject of recovery from bulimia, bulimia, she said, it was in my 40s, and if you suffer from bulimia, the older you get, the worse it gets. The longer it takes to recover from a bout, I had a career, I was winning awards, I was supporting nonprofits, I had a family, I had to make a choice. I live or I die. So like I said, she has been through some serious shit. This is her in 1979 on gay rights. <laughs> Do you feel that the gays in San Francisco, they're very powerful and very strong. They need your support. Are they still being discriminated against? Do you feel that? Oh, absolutely. To ask if the gays are being discriminated against in 1979. Oh, absolutely. Uh, culturally, psychologically, economically, politically, uh, gays and lesbians are discriminated against. They are a very powerful and she group, brought up especially uh, in, in San Francisco. They don't need me, but they like me <laughs> because, and they like our organization, the Campaign for Economic Democracy, because they know that working together we can be stronger than either entity is by itself so it's really healthy that we try to bring these things together are they using you or are you using for your economic democratic campaign i hope they use me what am i here <laughs> for if not to be used by good people for good things i'm great part of an organization answer. and you could also be cynical as you are and ask me isn't the organization using me but you could also think aren't i using the organization just the way the gays and lesbians that are here are using the organization that they're a part of. It helps give us perspective. It helps us keep our values intact. It increases our power, because as individuals we don't have very much, but all together we have a lot of power. So everybody uses. The point is, what are you using for? If it's just for greed or selfish reasons, it's one thing. But if you're using each other for things that are good and positive, then why not? I love her. How do you see the future of the gay movement in San Francisco in particular, and in America in general. There's a lot of bright people who don't like the power of the gays. I'm even more invigorated than I thought I'd be during this stream. It's hard to predict, uh, in, a, in a real sense, exactly what's going to happen. All we can know is that what, what this movement is uh. seeking, which is nothing less than respect and justice, and stopping discrimination against people because of sexual preference, you're on the side of the angels. I mean, it's just and it's right. And so if we're going to survive as a world, and we may not, but if we do, they're going to win. I thought I got kicked off live. That's why I sighed, but it was a message from last week. She's literally just such an icon. So we've kind of briefly touched on this because it's come up, but let's talk about her opposition to the Vietnam War. We all know I am very obsessed with the Vietnam War. My first stream ever was about the Vietnam War, and then I later did a two-part stream about the Vietnam War. So if you don't know about the Vietnam War, I have plenty of resources to teach you about the Vietnam War. I'm obsessed with the Vietnam War. Anyway, so... She appeared before an assembly at the University of New Mexico, Albuquerque, to speak on GI rights and issues. GI is like government issued. It's the soldiers. Soldiers is GIs. Um, 
At the end of her presentation was met with a discomforting silence until beat poet Gregory Koser staggered on stage drunk. He challenged Fonda using a four-letter expletives. Why hadn't she addressed the shooting of four students at Kent State by the Ohio National Guard, which had just taken place? In her autobiography, Fonda revisited the incident. I was shocked by the news and felt like a fool. On the same day, she joined a protest march on the home of the university president, Farrell Hetty. The protesters called themselves They Shoot Students Don't they a reference to fonda's recently film released film they shoot horses don't they which had just been screened in albuquerque so in the same year she spoke out against the war at a rally organized by vietnam veterans against the war in valley forge pennsylvania um vietnam veterans against the war the fact that they were already veterans from the war and the war was still going on and the veterans from that war were like the war is bad and we still did the war. Um, she offered to help raise funds for the organization and was rewarded with the title of Honorary National Coordinator. That fall, she started a college tour on uh, a tour of college campuses in which she raised funds for the organization. Apparently, she was a major patron for them. Fonda at Anti-Vietnam War Conference in the Netherlands in 1975. So she was a very, very outspoken about the Vietnam War. 1971, Fonda with Fred Gardner and Donald Sutherland formed the FTA tour, Free the Army, a play on the troop expression, Fuck the Army, an anti-war road show designed as an answer to Bob Hope's USO tour. The tour, described as a political vaudeville by Fonda, visited military towns along the West Coast, aimed to establish dialogue with soldiers about their upcoming deployments to Vietnam. The dialogue was made into a movie, FTA, which, con which contained strong fake frank criticism of the war by service members and was released in 1972. Fort Hood GI Coffee House. GI Coffee Houses were coffee houses set up as a part of the anti-war movement during the Vietnam War era as a method of fostering anti-war and anti-military sentiment within the U.S. military. Hell yeah. She visited the Oleo Strut, a cafe in Clean, Texas near Fort Hood on May 11, 1970. One of her first public anti-war actions, she took a stack of fatigue press underground newspapers and other leaflets and went on to Fort Hood at the East Gate. She began handing out the material to stunned GIs who immediately recognized her, especially because of her role in the film, the sci-fi one, Barabella, the boy movie. She was quickly arrested and the military police barred her from the base, but was but told a press conference that afternoon she did it because GIs aren't allowed to distribute literature there. I think it's appalling that men who are sent overseas to fight and die for their country are denied for the constitutional rights which they are supposed to be defending. She returned to the Oreo strut with actor Donald Sutherland September 18th, 1971 for several abbreviated versions of their then touring FTA show, which had been denied any larger Kline venue and by the increasingly hostile local establishment. Um, I'm pretty sure she's in this photo, but I don't know. She's not in the caption, but it's at the GI coffee house and it looks like her. Yeah, that's definitely her. I do think that that's her. Um, I always think of gastro <laughs> gastrointestinal issues. That's hilarious. Um, this is her listening to American GIs who just came back from Vietnam at Fort Ord in Salinas, California. So, between 1965 and 1972, nearly 300 Americans, including civil rights activists, teachers, and pastors, traveled to North Vietnam to gain firsthand understanding of the war, facing harassment upon their return due to the predominantly U.S.-centric media coverage. Jane Fonda visited Vietnam in July 1972 to document the bombing damage to the, the dike system? I don't know what that is. Along the Red River. What is that? Does anyone know what that is? Um, not the slur, I'm assuming. Um, is that a slur? Is that the, I don't know. Anyway, um, she asserted that the U.S. was deliberately targeting these, I don't want to say it again, I'm sorry. <laughs> Columnist Joseph Kraft, who was also in Vietnam, argued that the damage appeared to be incidental and was being exploited for propaganda. The slur is with a Y. That's what I thought, so I don't know what this is. Anyway, if anyone wants to Google it, let me know. Um, so, so they said that the damage was being exploited for propaganda, suggesting a more methodological approach would have been taken if these things were a primary target. In contrast, Sweden's ambassador to Vietnam noticed that the damage was method was methodic, and the other journalists confirmed that the, oh, water irrigation system. Okay, that makes sense. Other journalists confirmed that the attacks were directed at the entire water system. So, Hanoi Jane. 
Fonda was photographed seated on a North Vietnamese aircraft gun. The photo outraged a number of Americans and earned her the nickname Hanoi Jane. And Hanoi, is that how you say that? Um, she, in her 2005 autobiography, she wrote that she was manipulated into sitting on the battery and she had been horrified at the implications of the pictures. In a 2011 entry at her official website, Fonda explained that on her last day in Hanoi, Jane Fonda, emotionally drained after a two-week visit, was moved when Vietnamese soldiers sang a song about their independence, quoting Ho Chi Minh's words about equality and rights. So here is her with the soldiers and everyone was like literally freaking the fuck out about this. Like this was like hot hitting news of the time. They were pissed at her. She realized they should not be enemies as they shared similar values. In return, she attempted to sing an anti-war song, which brought laughter and applause from the soldiers. During this moment, she found herself sitting near a gun, possibly as a part of a staged event. Reflecting on this experience, Fonda acknowledged a lapse in judgment that continues to haunt her. She expressed remorse for any pain caused to the servicemen and their families and emphasized that it was never her intention to harm anyone. I completely see how this happened. Like, yes, that's not a good look that you're next to this big gun and when you're, like, so anti-violence. But, like, she was there to learn about the war. Obviously, she's going to talk to everybody that she can. Like I said, I see why people were upset, but I don't really think it was worth being upset about. Um, during her two-week tour of North... Like, it's not worth being upset about in the sense that, like, soldiers who fought in the Vietnam War have the right to be upset if they feel like that's damaging to them. Because she's with the, um, like, they were singing about Ho Chi Minh and stuff, like, you know, and, like, the North Vietnamese was the one that our country was fighting, so they're, like, you're posing with the people that were fighting, but, like, she's there to learn, so obviously she's gonna talk to those people. Yeah. So, like, it's a lot. It's a lot. Like, I get it why soldiers were upset, but, like I said, I don't think that's what the most important thing to be upset about is like, I think there's a lot of other more upsetting things during her two week tour of North Vietnam. Jane Fonda made radio broadcasts detailing her visits to bombed villages, hospitals, schools, and factories while condemning the U S military police. She met with American POWs and brought messages back to their families. When the Nixon administration publicized claims of torture against returning POWs, Fonda dismissed these as hypocrites and liars, asserting that the prisoners she had met had not experienced torture or starvation. Despite her denial of allegations that she had been coerced into meeting POWs, persistent rumors circulated suggesting otherwise. In 1972, Fonda helped organize the Indochina Peace Campaign, mobilizing anti-war activists in the U.S. following the Paris Peace Agreement. Um, a compilation of Jane Fonda's radio Hanoi recordings along with the voice of of Vietnam interludes between them. The first broadcast, Fonda is speaking about the anniversary of signing the Geneva Accords in 1954 and about the history of Vietnam's struggle against imperialism. The date on this is 1972. Um, is that July 20th? Listen to the movie actor Jane Fonda addressing the GIs on the occasion of the 18th anniversary of the signing of the Geneva Accord. This is Jane Fonda speaking from Hanoi on the occasion of the 18th anniversary of the signing of the Geneva Accord. Can you all hear this? Because I can barely hear it. And once again, I'm addressing myself to the US. Okay, this is, like, way too hard to hear, and that noise is kind of giving me a headache. But you get the situation. She was there, like we said, speaking about the bombings, talking to the soldiers. Um, her actions during the war led to ongoing resentment among some veterans, exemplified by incidents like at a U.S. Naval Academy's plebe ritual of shouting goodnight Jane Fonda met with a derogatory response from classmates. What does that even mean? Um, in 2005, a Navy veteran spat in Fonda's face at a book signing event, claiming it was a debt of honor, though she chose not to press charges. Imagine respecting freedom of speech so hard that you don't press charges when someone literally spits on you. I, I dreamed a New Yorker cartoon the other day, which was a wife in one of the suburban... Not this guy again. Those, maybe Saxon or someone who draws the suburban people, uh, saying to her husband, I, 
I won't understand this new war in Vietnam until I know which side Jane Fonda is on. Uh, and that sounds like it could be a New Yorker cartoon. That isn't bad, is it? What? I don't... What? <laughs> I, I haven't upset you, have I? No, no. I just... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's such a curious thing that uh, I love how she handles these terrible in interviewers. Again, right in the same places where you were, and that we were all reading about and talking about, and um, what was this? And yet we're not in it. And somebody else is doing it now. Very weird. I don't understand the world anymore. I wish I had lived in the twenties. I think I'd have made a good flap. Big powers are out to. You mean when we had World War One, and the Spanish flu? Try to punish the Vietnamese, and uh, our government. Well. I love her hair like this, too. Those people have been fighting a long time, and, uh... How can they, they stand it to have it all back again and uh, with, with different colors on the uniform? It's been 4,000 years. For those people who said they're just a pawn in the hands of China, I hope that people will begin to understand that they will fight anyone, including the Soviet Union, communist or capitalist country alike, anyone that tries to take away their independence. That's what it's about. The Vietnamese people are saying, just as we did 200 years ago, we will control our destiny, we will own our own land, we will have our own government, and if it means dying in the process of getting it, we will die. It's amazing. So your father corrected something you said. Did you read about that? He was absolutely right. <laughs> yeah, well... I'm working, Nixon's not, but he is certainly getting a lot of money from us, even though it's not working to get it. <laughs> Yeah, you had said, I'm getting paid these and, days, and, and, he isn't, isn't, and your father pointed out I that was... he was making quite a good deal of money. And, uh, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was interesting, because your, your father has had to tread a de delicate line I'm sure, at times with some of his old buddies. Uh... So yeah, she's on TV, she's talking I... about the Vietnam War. This is call her calling for, Jane Fonda calling for Vietnam POWs to be executed as war criminals. Against American imperialism. Many Americans would never forgive her for what she did and said. According to international law, these men are war criminals. That's according to law, according to the Nuremberg Principles, according to the Geneva Accord and others. They should be tried in front of a court and probably executed for what she didn't say they should be executed. She said according to the Geneva Convention, they should be executed. She didn't say according to me. They should be executed. People have no critical thinking skills. She's taken a lot of heat for what she did, and deservedly so. Ugh, people piss me off so bad sometimes. So in a 1988 interview with Barbara Walters, Jane Fonda expressed a regret for some of her comments and actions during the Vietnam War, specifically apologizing to veterans for any pain she may have caused. She acknowledged her intention was to help end the war, but recognized that she may have been thoughtless at times, particularly regarding a controversial photograph of her on an anti-aircraft gun, which she described as a betrayal and a significant lapse in judgment. I am being very forgiving of her for this. The same way when we did the Oprah stream, I was pretty forgiving of Oprah for platforming some problematic people. If you have been consistently speaking out about politics for decades and decades and decades, there are going to be moments where you do things that didn't land the way that you want them to. And I can still see her intention behind this. And to me, her intention was always in a good place. And like, yeah, it was kind of a bad photo op to be sitting on a North Vietnamese weapon during the Vietnam War, like kind of a bad photo op. But like I said, I don't think that bad photo op should overshadow all of the good things that she did and the like good attention that she brought on this. Um, in a 2005 interview with 60 Minutes, she reiterated her lack of regrets about her trip, um, except for the gun photo. So I think that's like the perfect way to describe it. She's like, this one photo was dumb, but the rest of it is still really important. And I don't like that the photo was overshadowing the rest of it. Um, she viewed it as a betrayal of American forces and her privileges as an American citizen. However, she distinguished her regret for the propaganda misuse of her image from her pride in her anti-war activism. Fonda defended her broadcast on Radio Hanoi, stating that they were necessary to expose to government lies and help end the war. Exactly. Jane Fonda will go to her grave regretting the controversial well, Vietnam photo. That, like, I think everyone needs to, like, literally just get over it a little bit. Like, maybe that's insensitive to Vietnam War veterans, but, like, she didn't shoot it. She was just sitting there while she was talking to them. And, like, if you're willing to fight in a war, but you're not willing to talk to your enemy, you care more about fighting than anything you're fighting for. 
Because if you cared about what you were fighting for, you would be willing to talk to them to see how you could get to that thing. But if you care more about killing people than having a conversation, they're focusing on a mistake rather than the truckload of there positive. There is a swath of the country who still to this day will look at Jane Fonda and say, oh, I remember, you know, and they, nothing will ever change how they yeah, feel. Yeah, well, here's the thing about that. I, I will go to my grave regretting the fact that I was photographed sitting on an anti-aircraft gun. That is in the documentary at length, mm -hmm. and I talk I about it at documentary. length, mm -hmm. and I have apologized at length many times over the years. What I, what, and I understand why people, you know, especially guys who were there or who have, you know, relatives who were there. I've had a long week. Are, are angry I know it's only me. Tuesday, but I mean the last um, seven It makes days. me sad because it means that they don't yet understand who the, who really was responsible mm -hmm. for the killing and the war and everything. And it wasn't just Republicans. It wasn't the, just the Nixons. It was the Johnsons and the Kennedys and all the way through. Both parties played a role in keeping a war going that the Pentagon Papers showed they knew they couldn't win. What I don't like is the fact that lies have been spread about things that I never did, and they continue. Mm -hmm. You know, that I turned in names of POWs that, who were tortured as a result, and so on and so forth. None of that is true. I feel bad when for her about this, like, that... stupid little incident, because to me it really is just so fucking stupid. Like, sorry. I think it's stupid. I'll say that. Um, in December 1970, FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover authorized a plan to undermine actress and political activist Jane Fonda's reputation by having the, uh, the agency send an anonymous letter to a Hollywood gossip columnist. I think this is before the photo. Where's the photo? The photo was in 72. Yeah, and this started in 1970, so this is literally you... before the photo even got done. That's absolutely insane that even before that photo, they were all over her. Not insane, like, I don't believe it. Like, insane that, like, our government sucks this bad so many times. Um, I just want to say my favorite boss was a Vietnam War vet, and he said he would have protested against it after, but he feared for his life. Real. Real of him to say. So, they were going to send a letter about her to a Hollywood gossip columnist. According to an FBI memorandum presented in federal court, the letter claimed that Fonda had led a chant advocating for the assassination of President Richard Nixon at a Black Panther Party event. The memo quoted Hoover, Hoover's belief that linking Fonda to the Black Panther Party could diminish her public standing if reported in the gossip column. To keep the FBI's involvement secret, Hoover instructed the Los Angeles Bureau to ensure that the letter's origins could not be traced back to the FBI. The memo was later obtained by Fonda through the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, exposing the FBI's strategy to exploit her activism and associations with the Black Panther Party as means to damage her reputation. This revelation highlighted Hoover's broader campaign to discredit prominent anti-establishment figures by covertly planting damaging rumors and manipulating public perception. For Fonda, this instance demonstrated the extent of the government's attempts to suppress her influence and discourage her outspoken activism, particularly against the Vietnam War and in support of marginalized groups. So Fonda versus the CIA, 1977. Fonda sought documents from the CIA under the Freedom of Information Act, attempting to uncover government surveillance and records concerning her activities. The CIA and FBI invoked several Freedom of Information Act exemptions, including Exemption 7F to withhold parts of the records, particularly the identities of FBI agents. The court found that the government's justification for withholding these names was insufficient, as they did not demonstrate that the disclosure would endanger the agent's safety. Like, you're going to be afraid of Jane Fonda? Someone spit in her her face and she didn't press charges on them because she respected their freedom of speech. Fonda versus CIA does go super hard though. For Fonda, this decision was significant because it highlighted government overreach and withholding information without clear justification. The ruling reinforced her right to access the records about her surveillance, exposing gaps in the government's arguments and setting a precedent for greater transparency in Freedom of Information Act cases, especially regarding public figures critical of the government. When I am thanking the men and women who built this country, I'm not talking about the Founding Fathers. I'm talking about Jane Fonda, who sued the CIA in 1977. That's who I'm talking about. Um, 
2013, it was revealed that she had been approximately one of approximately 1,600 Americans whose communications was being monitored by the National Security Agency between 1967 and 73 as a part of Project Minaret, a program that some NSA officials have described as disreputable, if not downright illegal. Fonda's communications, as well as those of her husband, Tom Hayden, were intercepted by Britain's government... Co- Britain's government communication headquarters under the UK-USA agreement that intercepted data on Americans was sent to the US government. They are literally obsessed with her. They are obsessed with her. This was a convert a national security agency surveillance program that ran through the 60s and all the way through 1973. It involved monitoring the communications of American citizens and international figures, especially those considered to be threats of or particular interest to the U.S. government due to their political activities, activism, or sometimes suspected connections to subverse or anti-government movements. The program was a part of a broader set of surveillance activities during the Cold War, was designed to monitor individuals and groups seen as potentially endangering national security, particularly amid the social and political upheavals over time. They're obsessed with her, but can you blame them? But can they be obsessed with her the way that we're obsessed with her, not in their gross, creepy way? They probably wanted to use her to get to her activist friends. Now, I think they were against her because she's the famous one that is... They were worried because they knew that, like, the white women of America were watching Jane Fonda and they were like, if the white women are against the Vietnam War, that is like the nail in their coffin of imperialism because they like knew that the people they had been marginalizing for decades and decades and decades were against the war, but they've never given a fuck about them. So just what that talk show host was saying, where he was like, oh, a cartoon where this guy's wife talks about you. That is what these men are worried about. These men that are in the top of the military, that are leading the National Security Agency, that are doing all this fucking illegal bullshit, they're worried that their wives are watching Jane Fonda and being like, are you doing illegal bullshit? That's exactly what they are afraid of, in my opinion. Um... They monitored individuals involved in the civil rights movement, anti-Vietnam war protest, and other activist movements, as well as certain journalists, public figured, and foreign nationals. They also monitored people like uh, Martin Luther King and Muhammad Ali and any other journalists that they deemed dangerous or suspicious. So this is um, Jane Fonda with Harvey Milk protesting Prop 6. Harvey Milk is a very prominent gay activist, if you do not know. I don't know a ton about him, but I do know that about him. So, Prop 6 in 1979, the Campaign for Economic Democracy was a California political action committee founded by Tom Hayden and Jane Fonda to promote progressive issues like rent control. In 1979, rent control? She's probably losing her mind right now. Um, Environmental protection, solar energy, labor rights, and anti-war protests policies um not protest the ced aimed to make hayden's political stance more centrist for elect electoral viability while pushing the democratic party leftward among its achievements they passed santa monica's 1979 rent control laws and supported california's proposition 65 to curb water pollution they also supported hayden's successful 1982 state assembly run and contributed to electing 60 state politicians oh so i guess her husband became like a politician Funding initially came from Fonda's film income, but later from her successful workout franchise, which provided $800,000 in 1986. Fonda gradually withdrew from CED due to her controversial public image from the visit to Vietnam in 1972, which affected Hayden's appeal to some voters. In 1986, they disbanded and were replaced with Hayden's new organization, Campaign California, with expanded state and national goals. I'm so mad that that photo fucked up so much for her activism that really really makes me sad so in 1982 they unofficially adopted an african-american teenager mary luann williams known as lulu whose parents were black panthers why did they adopt her what was going on with her parents mary williams tells black panther stories and speaks on jane fonda relationships start at three yo it's sway sway captain and black Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and you were a child at the time. So, uh, you Jane Fonda is on the cover of your book, The mm-hmm. Lost Daughter. Mm-hmm. What is your relationship with Jane Fonda? 
Um, this I, is Mary Williams, by the way. Right. Well, I'll give you a little bit of backstory. When um, when I was in the Black Panther Party, the, uh, I described the, the Panthers as my family, and it mm -hmm. was a family. They were a huge support to us, not just to us, but a lot of poor families. Being a part of that communal yeah, system, she has you know, been able to, to strive Kamala. and survive. But at some point, as the as the party began to decline, my family left the Panthers. My mm -hmm. father was in prison for being a political prisoner at the time. Mm -hmm. And my mother on her own took us out of the party and I went into public into the public school system. So here we were, a mother of six raising six yeah, a mother, a single mother raising six children on uh -huh. her own, and it was hard. Uh -huh. um, and so she had to, you know, she succumbed to a lot of the, the pressures that, you know, that came with all of that. And that meant not a very happy childhood for me after that. Yeah, and, um, and, and your sister went into prostitution? My sister um, went into prostitution wow. and became a crack addict. That's when crack was Damn. on the rise uh -huh. uh, in poor communities. That's what I was about to say. This is also around the timeline of the crack epidemic. That's horrible. Tree. So this was the eighties, probably about the around the late seventies, early eighties. Early eighties, yeah. Okay, all right. And um, so I was in public school, um, and my mother had some substance abuse issues herself. Uh -huh. Um, and one by one, we there were six girls and one boy. The boy was the youngest. My sister started going away, uh -huh. either you know just getting out of the house, and I knew my time was coming. I mean, they were leaving well before they should have left the home. Um, and as things got dark for me, I was sexually assaulted as well. Wow. But my uncle, thank God for my uncle, is that he sent me when I was younger, a lot younger, to a children's camp that Jane Fonda ran. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she was a supporter of the Panthers. And she said, I'd like to have this camp with all kinds of kids in it. So let's get rich kids, poor kids, Panthers, whatever, just put them in there. So I went to that camp and I met her there and I met other people there. And that became like another family to me every summer. And then when that assault happened and I went back again, they saw a new person. Yeah. They described me as a, look like a candle that was about to go out. Mm -hmm. She was like, what's going on with you? When I finally told her, she said, well, I want you to come live with me. Let's get your grades up. You'll come and you'll you'll live with me. And I said, all oh, right. I, I didn't think twice about it. Jane so. Fonda took you wow. in. She wow. sure did. The like the him. way Jane Fonda at this random summer camp saw a girl that was struggling and was like, live with me. Let's get your grades up. Now I'm about to cry. Henry Fonda, the daughter of Henry Fonda, the sister of Peter Fonda, the ex-wife of Ted, <laughs> Ted Turner. Turner. Yeah, Ted Damn. Turner was my stepfather for ten years, and it's, I still consider him my father. Wow, Ted wow. Turner is your stepfather. He is. He definitely is. And so you dad. write about all this in your book, I The Lost Star. I write about it all in there, all in there. It's so Yo, it's so that's crazy. So notable films during this time. Nine to, f nine to Five with Lily Tomlin and Dolly Parton on a Golden Pond, The Doll Maker, Agnes of God, The Morning After, she's getting um, a Old Gringo, a Emmy Award, Academy Award nomination, and another Academy Award nomination. And then she shifted from ballet to aerobics after she fractured her foot when she was filming a movie a while back. Under Lenny Kasdan's guidance, she developed a fitness program that became the foundation for her second successful career in the fitness industry. So like we said, before she was doing ballet, she's acting, now she's doing workout videos. Fonda released her first exercise video, Jane Fonda's Workout, in 1982, which inspired her best-selling book of the same name. The video sold over a million copies, contributing to the fitness craze among baby boomers, leading many to purchase the VCR along to follow along at home. What I don't love is that, like, we know she she had been like very recently or actively struggling with bulimia so like maybe being in like the fitness space like fitness is always important and you should separate exercise from the way you look like you should exercise to feel stronger but that just I could see where that would be tough emotionally um, just like lots of people looking at your body, lots of people commenting on your body. Um, Fonda released a total of 23 workout videos, five workout books, 13 audio programs, selling 17 million copies overall, more than any other exercise series. After a 15-year break from that, she returned in 2010 with a fitness video aimed at older audiences. In addition to her fitness career, she entered a non-exclusive agreement with Columbia Pictures to produce and star in projects under her own production company, initially named Jane Development Corporation, which she later renamed Fonda Films in 1985. Her last film before a 15-year hiatus was Stanley and Iris, which received mixed reviews despite praise for her performance. In 1991, after three decades in the film industry, she announced that she was retiring from acting. This is her workout video in 1982. That's hard. 
I should start doing these workout videos. My grandmother said she had these videos and wore a pink set with a pink yoga mat. The 80s were a time. Jump scare for exercise videos from the 80s. Let me make sure we have our game. I just realized I hadn't checked that. I think we get the point. She is exercising. So Fonda and Hayden separated over a Christmas holiday of 1988 and divorced June 10th, 1990 in Santa Monica. While in 1989, while estranged from Hayden, Fonda had a seven month relationship with soccer player Lorenzo Caclazania. And she was also linked with actor Rob Lowe in that same year. As she should literally as she should absolutely no problems with that go for it girl who gives a fuck i love her for this i absolutely love her for this jane's daughter vanessa and stepdaughter natalie vadim and jane at vanessa's graduation from brown university 1989 keep in mind she has been divorced from this vadim guy for a long ass time at this point and she's still hanging out with her ex-stepdaughter i think that shows a level of maturity that is highly impressive that I probably don't possess. Um, 1990 to early 2000s, she married her third husband. And I know earlier at the beginning, we said like three is the limit, but Jane Fonda can actually do whatever she wants. So if it ends up being that she married more than three guys, I don't care. And I think that she was right for that. So she married Ted Turner. If you don't know who Ted Turner is, he got money. He founded CNN. And CNN owns a bunch of other stuff. They got married December 21st, 1991. Was that her birthday? Something else happened on December 21st in this. I remember seeing it. At a ranch near Caps, Florida, about 20 miles east of Tallahassee. Interesting marriage location. Okay, period. Um, they separated in 2000 and divorced in 2001. So they were married for about 10 years, like the um, unofficial adoptee said. This is her with Ted Turner. I wonder why she got divorced from Ted Turner. I'm going to Google it. Why did Jane Fonda divorce Ted Turner? Um, do, 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 do. Oh, he was, he became a Christian. Like he found Jesus and she discovered that he was having an affair a month after they got married. And she said that he is a needy man who doesn't understand love and that she could no longer put someone else's needs first. Period. She just seems like she has standards and like boundaries. Um, and a, so the other guy she divorced, Tom Hayden, I wanted to look that up too. This is what the AI overview on Google says. Different careers. He was working in the government. She was an international celebrity, different schedules. Um, they were both very passionate about the war. It seems like their relationship was like the most legit, but it also said they called it quits in part because of his animosity over her workout empire, but also because neither of them were big on talking about their feelings. So it seems like they were more married as like, Hey, we both hate this war. I think we could work really well together. And like, they seem like more of a partnership than a marriage. Interesting. Oop, nailed it before you said it. <laughs> he has a yuck aura. So this is, she talks about seven years of celibacy following her divorce. I have heard a lot of women say that when they're like going through a lot of struggles with men and like keep repeating the same patterns with men, going celibate is like the way you fix that. Animosity over her workout empire is crazy, literally. I kind of want to talk more about her relationships, but also I don't want to center men and they're like kind of the least interesting thing about her. It seems like she married some guys who were cool at first and then they turned out not cool. So she divorced them. I'm sure there's more to the story, but. Your 60s, you can fudge your 60s. 70, you're really part of the old, old. So I want to know what, what is this? Why, how come I feel so good? I'd started a new love affair a long time. We should say, money. hold it, hold it, hold it. We should say, you and Ted Turner divorced. We divorced. I went seven years. I was celibate. Um, really? Jane Fonda? Yeah. And I thought, you know, it's done. It's over. 
And then um, did you like it? I was fine. But that was important for me because for me, most of my life, I thought if I'm not with a man, I don't exist. Most of your life, you've I needed been. like to I. Th be I think she's right. Like I think so if you're dealing with that, you need to be alone for a long time. Fine, I was fine. I didn't think. But you're love. happier now with a man. Well, I'm. You know, duh. I'm with somebody who's really different than me, who's someone I never could have been with before. You say oh, he's why? not you an alpha. That. You say he's not an alpha male. Not really, and you know he he's he's he he doesn't read. He doesn't do a lot of the things that I like to do. <laughs> he doesn't read, but I know what I want out of a relationship now. I want kindness, I want um, intimacy, I don't want hidden agendas, um, and so I can let go of all those things that that isn't there because I know what I need to have be there. I think that that is a very good outlook and I appreciate her for that. So from 2005 on, she was in, as we can see, she did go back to acting. Monster-in-law, Georgia Rule, 33 variations altogether, Peace, Love, and Misunderstanding, The Newsroom, she also had a Tony nomination, she had two Emmy nominations, The Butler, she was Nancy Reagan, um, Better Living Through Chemistry, This Is Where I Leave You, Youth, Golden Globe nomination, Fathers and Daughters, and yeah, she was really just doing the damn thing. Very talented actress. She um, then from 2007 to 2008 was the companion of widowed management consultant Lilden Giles, I guess. So she had a little boyfriend moment. We love that for her. Then 2009, she began a relationship with record producer Richard Perry. It ended January 2017. That December, when asked what she had learned about love, fondant, old entertainment tonight, nothing. I'm not cut out for it. <laughs> She's so real. I really just appreciate her being that real. Eh, we can skip the video of them. We're not going to we're not going to center men tonight. So health struggles. She was diagnosed with breast cancer and osteoporosis. Um, she underwent a lump lumpectomy in November 2010 and recovered in 2019. She revealed that she had a cancerous growth removed from her lower lip the previous year and pre melanoma growths removed from her skin. That's not super surprising. They didn't really know about sunscreen like that back then. Um, not to victim blame. Um, on September 2nd, 2022, she announced that she had been diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and that she had begun chemotherapy expected to last six months on December 14th or December 15th, 2022. She stated that her cancer was in remission and that her chemotherapy would be discontinued. She was also in Grace and Frankie still co-starring with Lily Tomlin as, um, aging, women whose husbands reveal they're in love with each other. I haven't seen Grace and Frankie, but a lot of people say I would like it. Elena and the Secret of Avalar, Our Souls at Night, Book Club, Jane Fonda in Five Acts. I need to watch that. I didn't even know that that existed. 80 for Brandy, Moving On, and then Book Club, the next chapter. She received critical acclaim for her performances and then a lot of praise for that documentary. So this is from Grace and Frankie, the trailer, I think. We want to talk to you about something. Saul and I are in love. Excuse me? You're gay. We want to get married. Oh, married! Because we can do that now. I know, I hosted that fundraiser. I'm heartbroken. You're gonna make better memories. And you can reuse the frames. They're gonna be fine, we're gonna be fine. I'm so scared. Mom, we're gonna find you people to talk to. People who understand exactly what you're going through. There's a group for wives of husbands who've turned gay in their 70s. That's kind of funny. I am young. My joints are supple. Yes, Robert is my law partner, but we are also homosexual law and bed partners with each other. Homosexual and law and bed partners. Well, this partner thing is really confusing, isn't it? Frankie, you're a complete disaster. You do realize I have a knife in my hand. I don't want to face my remaining years alone. I'm just like you, but with a better personality. Certainly bigger. Break down your emotions for me. It does look like a good show. Oh, now you can't eat until Monday. 
That looks cute. Maybe I will watch that. Next time I get sick, I'm going to watch that. That feels like a good sick watch show. So use of the mugshot in current day. It was used as the poster image for her documentary with a giant billboard in Times Square like we saw. In 2017, she began selling merchandise with her mugshot to benefit the Georgia campaign for adolescent power and potential. Oh, I just realized when she said I lived in Georgia for 10 years, that's when she was married to Ted Turner because he's famous in Atlanta and that's where CNN is based. That would make sense. This is the official trailer for her movie, Jane Fonda. I'm literally already about to cry. Daughter, which meant we looked like the American dream, but a lot of it was simply myth. When you were little Lady Jane Fonda, did you dream about being an actress? I was doing plays, making movies. I wanted to please Dad. Who would you like me to be? I never felt real. I just thought, I've got to find who I really am. I just felt like I had to become a righteous activist. I wanted my life to have meaning. You've been taking your public by surprise, invading army camps and getting yourself arrested. I'm proud of most of what I did, and I'm very sorry for some of what I did. I consider Jane Fonda one of the most courageous women of our time. She didn't look back. She didn't change her I'm voice. literally about to cry. I pledge to resist! None of my marriages were democratic because I had to be a certain way. I had to look a certain way. Am I connected to you? She's lived her life in front of us. Any healthy country, like any healthy individual, should be in perpetual revolution. I need to watch that movie tonight, actually. Um, in a 2018 interview, Jane Fonda stated that up to age 62, she felt she always had to seek validation from men in order to prove herself that she had value as a person, something she attributes to her mother's early death, leaving her without a female role model. As a consequence, she attached herself to alpha males, some of whom re reinforced her feelings of inadequacy despite her professional success. Fonda said that she came to see that attitude as failing the men in her life. Some men have a hard time... That as a failing of the men in her life. Some men have a hard time realizing that the woman they're married to is strong and smart and they have to diminish that because it makes them feel diminished. Too bad we have defined masculinity in a way that's so easily, in such a way that's so easily shamed. I'm not dating anymore. I did up until a couple years ago. I'm 80. I've closed up shop down there. <laughs> Good for her. So activism at this point, a little out of order because we go back through time because I think it's better to group it like this. So like we said, very much a feminist icon. Her and Barbara Streisand helped create the Hollywood Women's Political Committee to influence political causes in Los Angeles. Uh, the Mondale Farrow defeat ticket was usually defeated by, was ultimately defeated by incumbent President Ronald Reagan. Afterward, the HWPC pivoted to address new left political goals. Then the Senate Democratic turnover, they played a significant role in shifting the Senate to Democratic majority, demonstrating their committee's influence to continuing to mobilize Hollywood's progressive power in politics. Year of the Woman, they helped elect a number record of women, or a record number of women to electoral positions in 1992. Um, Continued activism despite setbacks more in the 90s, and then they disillusioned in 1977. You got to know when to break it up. You know what I mean? It's kind of important. Also, if you didn't already know, we were going to be here for a while tonight because this is literally so much to talk about in her life. Probably could have made this two parts. Um, anyway, so... Do, 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 do. It was widely recognized as the single most powerful entertainment group in politics. Um, 2001, the establishment of the Jane Fonda Center for Adolescent Reproductive Health. This is at Emory University in Atlanta. The center's goal was to prevent teenage pregnancy through educational programs and outreach. Um, 2002, the V-Day Summit in Activism. This is a summit um, inspired by the vagina monologues to stop violence against women. She has uh, literally done everything. She expressed her commitment to bringing women together for collective empowerment and change. 2004, the Ciudad Juarez March. She marched with other activists in Mexico, calling on officials to prioritize the investigation of hundreds of femicides in the city. Mr. Dacted, how many slides are in there? We're on 129 and there's 160. So like we've already done a lot and we're almost done. Just to let you know. <laughs> 2004, mentoring the all-transgender cast of the Vagina Monologues. Like, in 2004? She is so ahead of her time. She really is always on the right side of history. Support for a feminist initiative in Sweden. 
This is her at that march in Mexico in 2004. She co-founded Women's Media Center. She was Miss Magazine cover. Um, 2016, she supported for Bernie Sanders and concerns about the patriarchy. She predicted that Hillary Clinton would win the election, but she thought it would prompt a violent backlash. In a way, it did. Um, she said that she emphasized men need help. We need to help men understand why they are so threatened and change the way we view masculinity. Here's some covers of her throughout time, like that Miss one we talked about. Jane Fonda talks sex, politics, and religion. She literally is not afraid to touch on anything. 2017, she did a People magazine interview on sexual abuse and activism with Brie Larson. Um, she said, one of the greatest things the women's movement has done is make us realize that rape and abuse are not our fault. I always thought it was my fault that I didn't do or say the right thing. She reflected her commitment to helping young women recognize abuse and reject self-blame. She also noted that these experiences fueled her activism. I don't know when she was assaulted, but doesn't surprise me unfortunately it's happened to a lot of people especially a lot of women in hollywood um 2014 revelation about her mother's abuse fonda revealed that her mother had been sexually abused from the time she was as young as eight trauma that fonda believes contributed to her eventual suicide this disclosure added context to her activism and expressed her drive to support survivors of abuse 2016 she said that she was glad bernie sanders was running but she would predict Hillary clinton won we kind of already talked about that this is her discussing feminism in the age of Trump in 2016. Men are in crisis. Their brains are scrambled. <laughs> First of all, I just want to say how grateful I am that we are all together. I think on this day of all days, we need to know that we are going to support each other. The very fact that we have been successful has also called, caused a backlash, which we are now. Uh, we're running out of time, but I want to watch everything. Okay, this is seven minutes. We literally can't do it. I'm sorry. So she has had a lot of support of the LGBTQ, LGBTQIA community. White night riots in San Francisco following the assassination of Harvey Milk, California's first openly gay elected official and subsequent protest known as the White Night Riots. She voiced her support for the community. And when asked about discrimination, we kind of watched that clip. She said it was psychological, cultural, economic, political. So super early on, very, very public support of the gay community. Um, over the decades, she continued to speak out about this using her platform to advocate for equality. August 2021, fundraiser for the Los Angeles LGBT Center amid challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. She joined the cast of Grace and Frankie along with other um, supporters in a virtual fundraiser. Literally, she, may, she might be in her 80s, but she can work Zoom. So she wants you, Jane Fonda wants you to support LGBTQ youth. Sorry, I keep Since 2022. More than 400 bills have been introduced across the country attacking the rights of LGBTQ plus youth. What you may not know is that we've defeated the majority of them. That's because I think she's defeated the LGBTQ majority of them. LGBTQ plus youth are speaking out and fighting back in record numbers. Organizations like It Gets Better are working directly with the LGBTQ plus kids to empower and uplift them to connect them to the support systems and resources that they need to speak out and fight for the causes they're passionate about, not just LGBTQ plus and civil rights, but for reproductive rights, mental health, 
She literally is Fine. just so always right all the time. So during the Alcatraz occupation, oh my God, of course she was involved with this. A group of young Native American activists occupied Alcatraz Island in San Francisco. That is also one of my favorite streams that was a while ago. Um, in the name of Native tribes and protesting the poor treatment and limited resources on the reservations, she visited the protesters on Alcatraz demonstrating her solidarity with the movement and her support highlighted the occupation's significance and she brought visibility to their demands of self-determination, land rights, and access to resources. Um, the Fort Loughton occupation, we kind of already talked about this as well, where she went on the, um military base and was working with the native protest there um 2016 the dakota access pipeline literally like every single major social justice issue that she was alive for she was talking about literally all of them she joined thousands of protesters in standing rock north dakota during a months long demonstration against the pipeline um it was set to be built through tribal lands without consent of the tribe the um standing rock sioux tribe raising concerns about the potential water contamination and violation of indigenous treaty rights fonda spent thanksgiving with the standing rock protesters underscoring her solidarity she says it's been 45 years since the occupation of alcatraz at standing rock we are witnessing the flowering of the seeds that were planted there and again it is the youth who seem to be leading the way she literally does such a good job of like using her voice to amplify others voices and not putting the attention on herself um she criticized a lot of trump's policies she said the u.s has agreed to treaties that require them to get the consent of the people who are affected the indigenous people who live there i also really like to see how her language has evolved because if we remember in the 1970s she was using the word indian which now is super outdated and then in 2017 you can tell like she's always learning and always listening to the people that are leading the movement. And I think that's what's really admirable about her because I think a lot of activists are not, they don't have longevity because they're just talking about the same thing again and again and again. But the nature of activism is that, like she said, it's evolutionary and it has to change over time to fit the needs. And I think that she's like a really incredible display of that. Um... This is her honoring Native American Heritage Month. We'll just watch a couple Welcome, minutes. Welcome, firefighters. What a whirlwind week, huh? There's a lot happening out there. And Fire a lot to Drill celebrate. Friday. So let's start with the good news. As we all heard, Democrats clinch control of the Senate, staving off the red wave that wasn't. <laughs> Retaining the ability to confirm federal judges, that's important, and preserving a guardrail to the far-right agenda. She's so informed. <laughs> right? <laughs> Last week, we discussed the midterms with Nebraska Democratic Party Chair Jane Klebb. We talked about how this okay. election... We get it. This is a super, super, super long stream, or super long YouTube video, but she's giving political updates. She's very in the know. Um, and then I think later she has some Native uncle, women on. And they deserve justice, and we don't need any more of that kind of thing going on. Kwana isn't the only guest. Amazon in Alaska, obviously, in Bears so This is years. what I mean. She's, like, using um, her voice to bring in the, other women who are the more directly the affected man camps which are placed right outside indigenous communities and that's why um a lot of people are really being affected by you know the fossil fuel industry but not just because of the pollution but because of the man camps and it puts more native women at risk for becoming murdered or missing so if you don't know, I do want to talk a little bit about this because Jane Fonda is amplifying her voice. So we're going to talk about it as well. Native American women are murdered and go missing at insanely, insanely, insanely high rates. So obviously with pipelines being built on native land, yes, water is a concern. Yes, pollution is a concern, but it's also a concern, like she's saying, when they're building it to have these very large construction crews and then the numbers of men that are working on it right directly next to large groups of Native women when Native women are already at such a high risk. And we already know that when an area is very predominantly male, sexual assault is very high. The risk of women being murdered is very high. So they're basically saying like shipping thousands of men to live right next to this group that's already really vulnerable and is already dealing with this is like a whole other aspect and i think this is a great example of like why it's so important to have women included in any and all movements because like 
yes, it's a movement about climate, but it also deeply affects violence against women as well. And I think, like, again, this is just another example of how Jane Fonda is just able to, like, see the nuance and see all the sides of the issue. And I'm just really consistently impressed by her. Um, December 2002, she went to the West Bank. She visited Israel and the West Bank as a part of a a group focused on ending violence against women. She joined a protest with the group The Women in Black demonstrating against Israel's occupation in the West Bank and Gaza Strip outside the residence of the Israel Prime Minister. She also met with Jewish and Arab doctors and patients at a Jerusalem hospital, um, further demonstrating her commitment to peace and humanitarian crisis. She traveled to Ramallah, I think I'm saying that incorrectly, where she visited a physical rehabilitation center and a Palestinian refugee camp in 2002 2002 um my first professional construction management job was on a reservation and was not prepared for the precautions we had to take in hiring that is horrifying god i'm trying to make sure i don't say anything that gets me banned from tiktok for hate speech against men it's a really tough really tough, tough, tough line to ride. September 2009, she joined over 1,500 artists, writers, and activists in signing a letter protesting the Toronto International Film Festival's spotlight on Tel Aviv. She called it part of the Israeli propaganda machine, again, in 2009. Like, she's just so in the know. Um, and she said that it was being partially funded by the Israeli government. The letter contended that this was part of a brand Israel campaign um, aimed at distracting from the ongoing conflicts with Palestinians. The letter was signed by other gr prominent figures like Danny Glover, David Brin, Alice Walker, Naomi Klein, um, John Pelger, and Howard Zinn, and it generated significant media attention. Um, after the protest and the letter's language sparked controversy, she published a piece in Huffington Post clarifying her position. Where she said she regretted some of the wording, said it had been widely distorted, um, and Fonda emphasized that it was not to demonize Israeli films or filmmakers. She instead argued that the real support of Israel's image should focus on promoting the nation's peace efforts rather than a public relations campaign. Fonda called for an end to the Gaza blockade. So people were like, oh, Jane Fonda is being mean to the artist. I really don't think she is. She's being pretty direct, if you ask me. There she is. She's literally just always everywhere, and I'm so proud of her. I think we get the point. It's kind of grainy associated press footage. She was also opposed to the Iraq war. She early on voiced opposition to the war, stating that it would fuel anti-American sentiment worldwide and lead to increased terrorist attacks. It's almost like she's seen a thing or two. Um, 2005, announcement of the anti-war bus tour. She started leading a cross-country anti-war bus tour scheduled for March 2006. She intended to travel with her daughter and family of military veterans to speak out against the war. Um, the, ultimately, they canceled it over concerns that the high-profile presence might overshadow Sydney Shahan, another prominent anti-war activist and gold star mother whose protest outside President Bush's Texas ranch had gained attention. Literally, so then when she felt like, oh, instead of being helpful, this is actually taking away, she canceled it. She just canceled it. I absolutely love her. Canceled appearances with George Galloway. Um, at the last minute, she canceled medical appearances because of medical advice. Okay, that's fair. Anti-war rally in 2007. She said silence is no longer an option. She's speaking out against the Iraq war. Um, during the 2004 election, her anti-Vietnam war activism became a point in contention as her name was leveraged against Democratic candidate John Kerry. He was a former Vietnam veteran against the war um, and was criticized by opponents who associated him with Jane Fonda's controversial stance. The phrase Jane Fonda Democrat was used by the Republican National Committee Chairman Ed Jalipsy to paint Kerry as a radical anti-war activist. A Jane Fonda Democrat is like what I would aspire to be. Like she's the blueprint and she is the goals. I don't like, oh, that's an insult. Um, they also circulated that photo of her again. Lame, lame, lame. She's also done a lot for environmentalism, criticized Arctic drilling 2015. She did the March for Jobs, Justice, and Climate also in 2015. Criticized Prime Minister Justin Trudeau while protesting oil developments on a Greenpeace trip. 
fire drill Fridays and global environmental support. So like we talked about when we, we watched in part of that video, she has fire drill Fridays, a series of weekly protests in Washington, D.C. designed to pressure politicians to take urgent action on climate change. If you'd call, if you called me a Jane Fonda Democrat, I'd say you really think so. Um, weekly arrest on for the climate protest. She was arrested outside the U.S. Capitol on three consecutive Fridays on October 11th, 15th, and 25th. Um, also, t actor Ted Danson was arrested. Her fourth consecutive Friday of protest, she was joined by actress Catherine Keener and Rosanna Arquette. In total, her repeated number of arrests underscored her commitment to direct action and brought increased attention um, to the urgency of the climate crisis. She published an op-ed in the New York Times explaining her stance on climate action and the importance of civil disobedience and raising awareness. She expressed that the climate crisis required radical shifts and more significant push from political leaders, which she felt obligated to help through her actions. Her getting arrested four times at her Fire Drill Friday protest is absolutely hilarious to me. She's literally an icon. Look at her getting arrested. You are an 81-year-old woman who still has a phenomenally successful career in, uh, in entertainment and television. You're as active as anybody could be uh, in the environmental movement. Is there a message for older women I now women identify today? as when a Jane Fonda older, Democrat. What have you got to lose? You're not in the marketplace for some guy who's scared of a strong woman. So you can rise to yourself and become who you are meant to be, and you can be brave. I mean, there are older people with gray hair out there every Friday that get arrested with me that are just so great. And some of them are nuns, and some of them are rabbis, and they get arrested with me. Who've come from different parts of the United States, and they're old, and it's just beautiful. And is I there love more, her. You think there's more acceptance? Women, I'm literally about to cry. Women like this make me not afraid to age. Like, I love the saying that, like, aging is a privilege and wrinkles are a privilege. And, like, you shouldn't be afraid of aging because not everyone gets to age. And Jane Fonda, I'm literally crying. Jane Fonda is the definition of, like, you got put on Earth and she fucking used her time. She was like, I'm on Earth and I'm going to do everything I can while I'm on Earth. And it makes it, like... She shows me life is such a long thing. You can do so much in your life. I think it's really easy to feel like life is super short and like you can't do anything and like life is just so many missed opportunities. But like she has literally done everything. It's incredible. And so that today than there used to be. There's always been. Older people have always been. Older women have always tended to be the bravest. I'm literally about to cry. I love her so you much. You are... Um, her advice about getting arrested. Uh, this is nine minutes and I don't have time for another late night host. More climate action speaker at 350.org's food and water event, March to End Fossil Fuels, the Jane Fonda Climate Pack. This is a political action committee dedicated to removing politicians who support the fossil fuel industry. She seems so fulfilled and still striving for better. I love her. Welcome back. Uh, it is so great to see you. Thank this you isn't so much inspiring. For being on the show. This is why I was like pre election Jane Fonda, election night glee. She's who people think RBG was. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, every time you're here, we always have a good time. I want to talk to you about everything. But first, I want to talk to you about you're, you're, you're an unbelievable actor, you're an unbelievable activist, uh, and then you changed the entire game with the Jane Fonda workout. Oh, yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. That came out 40. I think the workout's like the least interesting thing. Years ago, did you have any idea that it was going to be as yeah. big? Oh, absolutely! It was totally strategic. The timing of it, <laughs> not. <laughs> I took a class with a woman, a talented woman named Lenny Kasdan, and it became a blockbuster. And I did not expect it. The whole thing, you know, I got all these musicians to give me songs because it came out first as a record, and of course they all agreed to it because they didn't. They didn't think it was going to be anything, and they didn't even ask for a you know percentage or anything like that. Yeah, they just well, I have this is the this is the workout. I don't really care about the workout stuff. Um, There's so much more about... interesting stuff that she's done. Um, Jane Fonda on her climate activism and message for young we voters. We have to get as many people elected, not just to the top. She has so many side quests. But Congress, Senate, state legislators. Oh my God, me and her have the same bug thing. People who are brave and who will not support corporations that are killing us. And 
If the young people stay home, we're going to lose. They have such power. So show us your power. Vote and then fight. She looks incredible. In many ways, it feels like you're choosing the path of most resistance. Like finding local candidates, going out and talking to them, raising money for them. It's so fun. It's a lot of work. Oh, it's so much fun. I don't get depressed anymore. You know, Greta Thunberg said something really great. You know, everybody goes looking for hope. Hope is where there's action. So look for action and hope will come. Ever since I'm doing 100% of what I'm capable in confronting the climate crisis, I don't get depressed anymore. I get angry, but I'm not depressed. Action Real. Is, is good. If celebrity is a currency, which it seems to be, why are you spending it this way? What other way would there be to spend it? Did y'all hear that? Because I'm a celebrity, I try to study very hard so that I'm, I know the facts, you know, and because and, that's important. And my metaphor for myself and for other celebrities like this is a <laughs> You'll repeater. heard that, right? You know what a repeater is? It's normally from when the other way. I don't know what hill, he's doing. A tall mountain, and you see these antennas on the top. Those are repeaters. And what they do is they pick up the signals from the valley that are weak, and they pick them up and distribute them so that they have a larger audience. That's what celebrities do, like me, when I'm doing the work I'm doing. I'm picking up the signals from the people who live in Wilmington and the Central Valley and Kern County and are su really suffering and the animals that can't speak and trying to lift them up and send them out to a broader audience. We're repeaters. It's a very valid thing to do and it's fun <laughs> and you make new friends. My favorite ex-husband, Ted Turner, said, you my favorite ex-husband, 60. <laughs> yeah, you do. My favorite ex-husband. That is absolutely hilarious. But I guess if you have three, you would have a favorite. Um, this is Theft of Our Land, talking about the oil pipeline. Activists today protested against the ongoing construction of the Enbridge Pipeline at the headwaters of the Mississippi River in northern Minnesota. For like, what other celebrities are protesting in northern protest, Minnesota? As around two dozen protesters occupied and locked themselves to equipment at one of the pipeline pump stations earlier today. A Department of Homeland Security helicopter. I want to be James Bond when I grow up too. The oil pipeline, which runs from Canada to Wisconsin, is. We already kind of talked about this, and I want us to have time for the game. So, she, in September 2024, the way this literally is like a month ago, she joined 125 prominent figures, including actors and musicians, signing an open letter advocating for California's AI safety bill. The letter was addressed to Governor Gavin Newsom, urging him to sign a bill that aims to hold companies responsible if their AI models lead to mass casualties or cause damages exceeding $500 million. Among notable co-signers are Alec Baldwin, Pedro Pascal, and Kelly Rowland. The letter highlighted the grave threat threats from AI that used to be stuff of science fiction, but not anymore, and they need reasonable safeguards. The bill supporters stress that companies developing large-scale AI systems should be held accountable for um, potential harmful outcomes, reflecting growing concerns over AI safety and possible innovation. So, literally, that's what she's up to right now. I love her so much. She is probably the person I'm the most inspired by. I'm going to be honest. If I had to pick someone that I am the most inspired by, it's going to be Jane Fonda because she has literally done so much in her life. Um, here are all of our sources for tonight. There's a lot of them. I think there's some more beyond what's just on this list. But let's go ahead and play our freaking game. So, I'll put the link in the chat. This is just a fun little trivia game moment. And there's not that many of us. So, you all have a much higher chance of getting into the top 10 because there's only 87 people here. My stream has been like mega flopping recently. I know it's because I kind of stopped promoting it because I've been so busy that I just kind of stopped posting about it on TikTok. So, I really need to do that. But also, if you guys could invite your friends, that would be kind of cool too. I'm just saying. Um, and again, next week we are going to talk about Glee. Let me go ahead and put up the game for us. I appreciate you all sticking through it through a long night. I hope that it was worth it. We're playing the Halloween one. It's only here for a couple more. This is our last time playing the Halloween one. Um, I hope that it was worth it because, again, I knew this was going to be like a long night and a long topic, but I just love her and respect her so, so much. And it, like, it makes me very inspired, like I said. 
my, God, my back hurts so bad. It's because I was six and I didn't work out for a full week, which was really stupid of me because now it's taking me even longer to recover. And whenever I don't work out, my back starts to hurt because then my muscles get weak and then I have bad posture. And yes, hot girls vote early. Um, yeah, please go vote. Like it, like it's actually, like I'm not joking. Like it's not funny and I'm not laughing anymore. So if we could do that, please, 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 please. Alrighty, I'll give people a couple more seconds to join. There's 14 of you. Let me see what text messages I have. There's people talking about phone cases. It's really critical. Do, do, do. Did you guys see all the other creators I was with this most previous weekend? One of them just posted a video of us. I literally felt like ancient. So they, this is like a transition video. Did I do good? Because I literally had a mental breakdown over it. I'm about to show up. Just wait. Maybe I'm not about to show up. Okay, I'm after her. Did we do good? I was the last one. Your Michigan content was so funny. I'm glad that you guys liked it. It was, I had so much fun and I felt like very inspired being with them. I felt very old, but I felt very inspired. They were such a fun group of people. And the part that I loved about it the most is like, sometimes people can be a little funny. People can be like, I have a lot of followers. I don't want to be on your page, but literally everyone was there. If you were like, will you be in my video? Like everyone was working together and it was so cool to be with people that were so different from me because most of those people I never probably would have come across or hung out with. Like, I didn't know who they were going into the weekend. Like, some of them I had seen a couple of their videos, but I wasn't mutuals with anybody. Like, did not know anybody. Um, and everyone was just so willing to work with each other, even though, like I said, we all have very different content. Was it a content house y'all stayed at or did you have your own hotel? A mix of both. We stayed in a hotel, but the hotel was kind of far from Michigan's campus. So we had a very small Airbnb so that we could like leave our stuff places and have somewhere to make videos. But the Airbnb, I think, was only two bedrooms. So we did have hotel rooms. So like, so it was amazing. She was so sweet. And her video with us like reacting to the Trump audio is going like viral right now, which is super cool. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and hit start on the game while I keep talking about this. It was so fun. I was like so honored to get invited. Um, and I had a really good time and I just like learned so much. I've never done anything like that. And it was just a really cool time. I'm glad you guys liked the content from it because I know some of it was kind of different from what I usually do. But yeah. Were there any other teachers there? No. So that was the point is like they wanted to gather people that were all super different from each other because I see their logic. Because if you have a bunch of TikTok teachers, we probably have a lot of the same followers. And the whole point was to get maximum reach to get young people engaged in politics. So they picked people that are all very different from each other so that like our people could see each other. Like it was just the way it was gone about strategically, logistically, friendly. It was great all across the board. I had such a positive experience. Um, and I really do feel like we got some shit done. Like we talked to a lot of young people. We were at the tailgate for a really long time. Um, and yeah, I really, and I like, I, this sounds corny, but it truly felt like a civic duty to go. Like it truly felt like a civic duty to go. And like, yeah, there's like the contracts of how many videos you need to make. But I was like, I don't give a fuck about that. I'm just going to do like as much as I can. Like anything I can do in the last week before the election, that's what I'm doing. Like if I feel like I can do something to help, I'm going to do it. So that's kind of where my headspace was with going. Even though I hate airplanes, I got on an airplane. And people in the Midwest are so nice. Like the Uber drivers, the TSA, like everyone. In the Midwest is incredible. Too cold, so not moving up to Michigan. But great people. Y'all are doing good in the game. I'm not even paying attention to you at all. 
My party in the USA jeans did eat. They are kind of uncomfortable, but it was so worth it. And it was a long day to be wearing uncomfortable jeans, but like literally no regrets. Cause I knew I was like, these jeans eat so hard. I have to wear them. You guys, it's almost Thanksgiving. I'm excited to have a break from work because on my last break from work, I was sick. <coughs> oh, I'm not sick, but I don't think my lungs got the memo on that. Which documentary featured her discussing her activism and experience over the years? Uh, I hate when I see teachers on social media talking about breaking up fights. That's terrible. We don't get paid enough for that. Make the administrators do it. And that's literally the policy in my district, so no one can get mad at me for that. It was a hard one. She had a couple different spouses. Roger. Her calling Ted Turner her favorite ex-husband is still hilarious to me. What are the names of her children? I don't even know this. We're very, like, not centered as on her personal life as much. I know it, we mentioned it, but... The family questions got me bad because we decentered men. We had a limited amount of time and we just decentered men. All righty. Nice job. Our winner is a hostile Walmart, a hostile Walmart takeover. Caitlin, Jane's number one fan. Jesse is crazy. Vicky Fondelson, Mary Jane Fonda, Seguel, um, Nat, Junior Assassin Troy, Saturn Cat, Mighty Fondia, Quite Fonda Her, Jordan Shelby, Finley, Fonda Films, A Dutch Bros Parking Lot, K Jane, L Lola, Next Week on Glee, Savannah Life Snacks, I Was Very Late to Class and Didn't Study, I'm Fondia and a Jane Fonda fan. Thank you so much for being here. I love that you got your first 10 out of 10 beautiful usernames as usual. I love you all so much. Tonight was a very inspirational. I'm glad it reduced your stress. Weirdly, talking about bad things in history makes me very hopeful because I'm like, if we've gotten through all these things and made change at other points in times, we can do it again. Um, and yeah, I just like feel like she's really a model in the blueprint. And I would say she's one of the women I admire most. I should put a flag of her in my classroom. Anyone when Jane Fonda tells them she was born via C-section in 1937 at Doctor's Hospital. <laughs> oh no, why'd you delete your post? Come back. Come back. Okay, it can be deleted. It's also good to remember the U.S. sucking big, big time isn't so unprecedented. Exactly. Exactly. But anyway, this was a long night, but thank you so much for being here. I really, really enjoyed this stream. I hope that you liked it. My cat watching your YouTube with me. That's incredible. And again, next week we'll be talking about Glee. If the election news breaks in the middle of the stream, I might have a mental breakdown. So join next week to see me have a mental breakdown, I guess. That's your enticement. I really need to start doing a better job promoting this stream because it really is one of my favorite internet things that I do. And I feel like it just does not get the attention that it deserves. But anyway, have a great night. I love you so much. And I will see you here next week for Glee. Good luck on election day. Make sure you go vote. Okay.